Exactly. She should have made the speech live, which she didn't do. She taped it. And, you know, she gets these fawning reviews. I mean, this extraordinary speech. I mean, she's beautiful. Ah. I mean, it was so beautiful. And, you know, she wasn't just putting the president down. She was trying to pick the country up. Ah. Who's your captain? Howie Carr. I'm a lifelong Republican. Well, you say that. But that attachment holds second place to my responsibility to my country. That's why I've chosen to appear at this convention. Sure, that's the reason. We closed a couple of DCR pools in Lawrence over the weekend. We've done a bunch of things with uh, local communities around mask ambassador programs, around um, sort of enhanced presence on local beaches. Can't stop Charlie Parker! Unchained and unstoppable. I have legislated on racial justice. I have stood with civil rights heroes like the late John Lewis, like Dolores Huerta, like Martin Luther King III. Hey, Joe, you gonna denounce the bigot behind you? She called me a n***. A n***, all right? And you're standing there celebrating her. Oh, this is awkward. Rump swabs, hacks, and moon bats beware. It's Howie Carr. That Rayla Campbell. Wow. <laughs> Took a little work to, you know make it ready for prime time, but, uh, it was good. We didn't have time to do that last night, but, uh, this, this morning we had, we had the opportunity to fix it up. That was nice. I like that. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if Joe K is going to really lose this thing. Joe, Joe, Joe Kennedy. I don't know. I, I'm a registered voter in Florida, but I, I, you know, I might vote for Markey if I were still up here just because, you know, I was talking to a guy today and I said, who are you voting for? And he said, Markey. And I said, why? And he said, and he told me something that Ted Kennedy had done to him. And then I remembered what had done to him. And then I thought, Ted Kennedy tried to shut down the newspaper I worked at. Remember that? That was back in the 80s. Tried to shut down the, the, the Boston Herald and the New York Post because I called him fat boy. Now, that's reason enough to vote, vote against his great nephew, I guess. All right, 844-500-4242. What, what is John Kasich talking about that he's gone to the, uh, that, he, that he is at the uh, convention? It looked, looked to me like the, he was in a field or in a park, probably in a park in Massachusetts because there was nobody else there. Charlie Parker had sent out the folks to shut down the park because they weren't wearing masks or something. And... <laughs> I just heard Rush, uh, some guy from North Andover called him and he said, he said, I think he still hates uh, Trump for talking about how he, he stuffed himself with pancakes during the New York primary. Remember that? And he said, he said, he, Trump, <laughs> Rush didn't remember, but if they found the sound cut, I remember it. He was like, he said, I tell my son, Baron, don't, don't talk with your mouth full. Don't, don't eat, keep your mouth closed when you're chewing. And it wasn't just pancakes too. Remember he was going around to, he was going around to Italian places and he was like eating these huge pizza and ravioli and lasagna. And then he got like eight cannolis to go before he walked out the door. He was, he got like 2% of the vote in New York state, but he, but he got free food for, for weeks. God, and now we're supposed to think he's the, uh, you know, the conscience of the Republican Party. What a, what a turd that guy is. Lord. And then I want to know where the fact checkers are on Nancy Pelosi. Where, where are they? You know, they always say Trump, Trump says mail, uh, mail in ballots will without, says without foundation, mail in ballots will lead to voter fraud. Did you see what she said? She said, House, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is claiming that Social Security benefits are delivered by mail. This is not true because, as the Social Security Administration states in its own literature, if you get Social Security benefits, you must receive your payments electronically. That's the rule. But on the other hand, she's 115 years old, so probably when she collected you? when she collected her first check back in 1969, probably it still was delivered by snail mail. Does she? Do, but I thought they switched everybody over at some point, didn't they? 
844-500-4242. We have a Charlie Baker uh, press conference today, too. We'll we'll get to that. I'm, I'm still waiting for the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the July report to come out. I check every morning because I'm still... I'm. I'm still wondering if we're number one. Can we be number one for another month? 17.4% unemployment rate. And he's not, he's not doing, doing anything about it. Did you see the, uh, Jared is, uh, sitting in on the board for Taylor. Taylor's got a, uh, a new baby, his first kid on the way. And so he'll, he's going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So Jared will be filling in. And in the intro, Jared put that, put it, Jared put in the story of this, uh, woman, Kristen, or Quiza. And that's the story. She's the one who said her, her uh, father died because of, uh, because of Donald Trump. Her 65 year old father got infected with coronavirus and died. And so now it's Trump's fault somehow. Okay. Let's play the cut. Let's play that cut. Uh, cut two. I'm Kristen or I'm one of the many who has lost a loved one to COVID. My dad Mark Anthony Urquiza should be Mark here Anthony. today. Did he know he Brutus? Isn't. Did he know he Julius Caesar? And Donald Trump. He voted for him, listened to him, mm. believed him and his mouthpieces when they said that his coronavirus was under control and going to disappear. That it was okay to end social distancing rules before it was safe. You get the picture. You get the picture. Okay. Here's her own biography from uh, UCAL Berkeley. I've known my primary mission on this planet since I was nine years old, to protect Mother Earth. I realize, wow, I never had such grandiose plans. I just wanted to have a good time in college. I realize that I am a trailblazer in the environmental movement for others like me. Brown, queer, community-focused, ethically-minded change makers. Wow. Isn't it for someone else to say that you're ethically minded? But that's, that's what was going on. And Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama was taking a page out of Joe Namath's book last night. I don't know if you heard that. You're probably, I, I, and again, I'm not going to lie to you and say I watched it. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I watched the second of it because I didn't. I just uh, got up this morning and started looking around on the internet and watched Fox and Friends for a little while, and I just picked and choose what I wanted to, to use. And then people called me and told me something. But he, here is something that uh, Jay from Chelsea f- discovered. Uh, Michelle Obama channeling Joe Namath. Cut 33. If we see someone suffering or struggling, we don't stand in struggling. judgment. We reach out. Struggling. I'm struggling. Is it real or is it Memorex? Let's go back to Michelle. If we see someone suffering or struggling, we don't stand in judgment. We reach out. Struggling. 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 All right. 844-500-4242. And, you know, I always hate this saying that Michelle Obama came up with. I hate it when Bill Belichick says it. I hate it when anybody says it. The the VIPs are laughing because they know exactly what I'm thinking of. It doesn't mean anything. It is what it is. What does that mean? That's like saying time will tell. (laughs) Of course time will tell. It is what it is. That is just so lame. (sighs) Cut five. So let me be as honest and clear as I possibly can. Right. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. He has had more than enough time to prove that he can do the job, but he is clearly in over his head. He cannot meet this moment. He simply cannot be who we need him to be for us. It is what it is. To which... Trump responded, cut eight. Yeah, no, she was over her head, and frankly, she should have made the speech live, which she didn't do. She taped it, and it was not only taped, it was taped a long time ago because she had the wrong deaths. She didn't even mention the vice presidential candidate. 
uh, in the speech. And, you know, she gets these fawning reviews. If you gave a real review, it wouldn't be so fawning. I thought it was a very divisive speech, extremely divisive. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for my campaign. Incidentally, we had the poll question yesterday. How many times would the, Bernie say working or working class or working families or workers? And again, I didn't listen to the speech, but I did read the transcript. Four. I was kind of surprised. I thought it would be five to ten, but uh, it was only four. Maybe somebody edited the speech for him, but it. Childhood favorite. Excuse me. Child. Okay. All right, 844-500-4242. We'll take some calls when we come back, and uh, we have a uh, we have an interesting guest at at three thirty. It's uh, so, somebody that uh, her her video is has gone viral today, and I don't mean Rayla. I mean uh, <laughs> I mean a congressional candidate in Maryland. It's a it's a hell of a video though. It should be shown at the Republican convention next week. Next week, eight four four five hundred forty two forty two. I'm Howie Carr. You can call him Fat Boy, just don't call him Late for Dinner. It's Howie Carr. There's a lot to love about. There's a lot to love about you. There's a lot to love about driving a brand new Subaru Ascent. From its standard symmetrical all-wheel drive to its three rows of seating. Love all the 2020 Ascent has to offer. Lease for only $299 per month for 36 months with $32.49 due at signing. Details at SubaruOfNewEngland.com. The Bayview Collection is a small group of distinctive luxury boutique hotels located in the beautiful coastal village of Camden, Maine, whose properties include the Lord Camden Inn, Camden's premier downtown boutique hotel, the Grand Harbor Inn, Camden's only Four Diamond Waterfront Hotel, and 16 Bayview, Camden's newest contemporary hotel property with its iconic rooftop bar, The View. The Bayview Collection, three great choices, one remarkable destination. To learn more, visit them at bayviewcollection.com. Mike Bloomberg is spending millions of dollars on all of his campaign ads, but we put together some of our favorite Bloomberg clips, and guess what, Mike? This one's totally free. I think we disproportionately stop whites too much and minorities too little. To, to be a farmer, it's a process. You dig a hole, you put a seed in, you put dirt on top, add water, up comes the corn. Then we had 300, you could learn that. Donald Trump is the world's biggest schoolyard billy. bully. Big gay ice cream is the best. The Communist Party wants to stay in power in China, and they listen to the public. When the public says, I can't breathe the air, Xi Jinping is not a dictator. He has to satisfy his constituents or he's not going to survive. He's not a dictator? No, he has to. He has a constituency to answer to. I'm ready to get to work, so let's get it on. I would be 79 years old when I took office. To start a four-year job, maybe an eight-year job at age 79, may not be the smartest thing to do. Why did you say what you said in that 2015 speech? Um... We all shop online, and now you can do it a better way with Honey. Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. Just download Honey to your computer and shop on all your favorite websites like normal. When you check out, just click the Apply Coupons button that pops up. Wait a few seconds for Honey to scan its database of all the working coupons on the web. Then watch your price drop. Honey works on nearly every online store, including Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Macy's, Etsy, and more. And Honey has found over $2 billion in savings for its users. That's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome Store. It's 100% free to use and installs in seconds. Plus, it's backed by PayPal, so you know it's secure and reliable. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. So get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash Howie. That's joinhoney.com slash Howie. And now, a minute of wisdom from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like... The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? And like this is the war. This is our World War II. I think that there's a lot of people more concerned about being 
precisely, factually, and semantically correct than about being morally right. But being factually correct is important. It's absolutely important. And if we work our butts off to make sure that we take back all three chambers of Congress, uh, rather all three chambers of government, the presidency, the Senate, and the House in 2020, we can't start working in 2020. Hi, my name is Jane Lucas, and I am from the town of South China, Maine. This is Al from Merrimack, New Hampshire. Hey, I'm Angela from Brewster on the Cape, and this is the one and the only Howie Car Show. The song is titled Miss You. I don't miss anything about the Democrat National Convention. I, you didn't miss anything. And I think I can say that having missed everything. The, the overnight ratings were down, I think, uh, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent. But uh, it was not a – and I don't think they were all that dynamic back in 2016. They've just taken a, a real tumble. As far as I could see, Trump with his with those live speeches he made in Minnesota and Wisconsin yesterday, there was a lot more action and a lot more energy in those speeches. You just you just can't get the same kind of uh, uh, bang for your buck in entertainment value if it's if it's on tape. I mean that's just the way it is. It's it's got to be live. Today's poll question is sponsored by our friends at MassFiscal.org. MassFiscal has led the charge against tax increases, most recently opposing Charlie Parker's terrible TCI doubling of the gas tax, Transportation Climate Initiative. He's, he's, got that, uh, he's got the authority now from the legislature. He hasn't used it yet because it, seems, it, it would seem rather inappropriate even for Tal Duvall to double the gas tax when we have the highest unemployment rate in the nation, not to mention the third highest death rate. I mean, hasn't, hasn't he wrecked the economy and the state enough as it is? No, no, not at all. Sign up for free at massfiscal.org now, massfiscal.org. Jared, what's the poll question? What are the results thus far? If you had to choose... Which one of these DNC speakers would you hang out with for the night? Senator Bernie Sanders, John Kasich, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, John Forbes Kerry, Senator Chuck Schumer, or Governor Gavin Newsom? I, it comes the recurring question, is suicide an option? <laughs> uh I'm going to vote for John Kerry just because I can, uh, I've, I've heard his rap before. <laughs> I've sat on the stool next to him and I was the one who was buying and I'm sure he's not buying for me, but at least I can go into a coma. You know, <laughs> I can go into a, just a, a, a waking coma when I'm listening to Kerry. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to pick him. Uh, much like 2004, John Kerry is only polling at 8%. Bernie Sanders is in the lead with 31%. John Kasich he, he's gonna 22. He's going to steal something from you. Do you <laughs> understand? I mean, the guy that he lives next door in, to in Washington never gets his Sunday Washington Post because Bernie steals it from him. Do you understand? The paper. I, I don't understand. Democracy dies in darkness for that guy because he can't get the paper because Bernie stole it. Okay, who's second? Uh, second place is John Kasich at 22. Oh, my God. That's just so disgusting because of those pancakes and the pizza and the cannolis. Maybe he's got some of the cannolis left, though, from 2016, and he'll bring you a nice chocolate one. Uh, Gavin Newsom is third at 21. Ugh. Nancy Pelosi is in fourth place at 12%. Where's my teeth? Senator I got I to I gotta go get a Botox shot. I'll be back. Get me some more beer nuts. Elizabeth Warren is at 5%. Oh, of course. I'm going to get me a beer. <laughs> yeah. And smarmy crying Chuck Schumer coming in at 2%. <sighs> Boy. It's the 27 I, Yankees a suck right there. I was going to I was gonna say uh, Grace was putting this together, and she was going to put Bloomberg on, and we thought Bloomberg would win because he, he at least, you know, Bloomberg would pick up the tab, you know? But, he, but apparently Bloomberg is not speaking at this thing. I, I don't know why. I, I would think maybe because he stiffed all of his employees that he said he was going to employ pay through the election. Maybe because 
it would just remind people that when Bloomberg was mayor of New York, you know, there were problems like, you know, outlawing 32 ounce Slurpees, that kind of thing. But one year old kids weren't getting killed in Brooklyn, you know, just, uh, w- you know, when their, uh, their parents took them out, it was not, it was not nearly as bad. Uh, eight, four, four, 500, 42, 42. That's the toll free number of the Howie car show. Let's, uh, let's, let's play, uh, uh, Hannity nailing the, uh, the DNC convention preview cut 11. It will be the most boring, repetitive, dull, mean-spirited convention in history. Yes. And of course, we will get a heavy dose of hatred and rage and cult-like madness, psychosis, hysteria against all things Donald Trump. They will call him evil, awful, terrible. They will lie. They will make false, radical, and completely unrealistic socialistic promises that can never, ever be kept, ever. What they won't tell you is how much of your money they will waste, how many of your freedoms will disappear. You will not hear about American greatness, American exceptionalism, and American genius. That I can predict, too. Now, the predictable playbook that I warn you about, that we see every two years and every four years, will be on full display. John Kasich, cut four. Joe Biden is a man for our times. Time. If our time is, oh, I don't know, 1957? John, Joe Biden is a man for our times the way Ed Markey is a man for our time. Joe Biden, like Ed Markey, is the man that time forgot. And you know what? He forgot time. He forgot everything. Is it call for all of us to take off our partisan hats and put our nation first for ourselves and, of course, for our children? When America chooses the right path and pulls together, like we've done so many times before, you know, we can dream big dreams. How did how did he beat out Willard Mitt Romney and Charlie Parker for the honor of speaking in a field? I'm Howie Carr. Campers, are you thinking about getting a new or used RV this year? This is Howie Carr, and Cold Springs RV is ready for you. The 2021 models are now arriving daily, but they won't last long. After one visit, you will understand why they are a one-stop shop for all things camping. With all the top RV brands, a new state-of-the-art service center, a new RV body shop, and a huge store full of accessories, you don't need to go anywhere else. If it is service you need, the brand new state-of-the-art service facility is ready for you. They service all makes and brands. If your RV needs body work, they have you covered. They can help you with collision repair, roof replacement, or even a new paint job. From minor repairs to major insurance jobs, Cold Springs RV can do it all. As a full-service RV dealer, you know they can fix just about anything. If you are a service technician and want to work for the best, ask about employment today. Cold Springs RV, Route 114 in Ware, New Hampshire. ColdSpringsRV.com, your destination for all things camping. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Would you say you're more like your mom or your dad? No, I don't think I ended up being like either of them now that I think about it. My mother worked hard, but she she never uh, really learned how to make a lot of money. And my father didn't work so hard, but he had a, a good personality. He was good with people. He was better than me with people. That's why I'm saying I'm not like either one of them, I don't think. Did you have any siblings? Yes, I have a brother, a younger brother. What was your favorite subject in school? Well, all kinds of history. I loved all kinds of history. If you could have three houses, besides the ones you already have, anywhere in the world, where would they be? I wouldn't mind uh, having another house in Palm Beach on Clark Avenue. Maybe a place in uh, southern Maine. I don't need a third place. Didn't you already have a house in Maine? I did. I did. It was on an island. It was not a good fit for the mailroom manager. I've heard the house was haunted. Is that true? Yes. And uh, my wife didn't really care that much for my relatives. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours, too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever, is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the 
future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. Joe Biden might be running for president in 2020, so we should play some of his greatest hits. Barack and I finally reduced the disparity in sentencing, which we've been fighting to eliminate, and crack cocaine versus powder cocaine. It was a big mistake when it was made. We thought we were told by the experts that crack, you never go back. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. If you want to protect yourself, get a double barrel shotgun. If there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts. They're going to put you all back in chains. Give me a break. That's a bunch of malarkey. The three letter word. Jobs. J-O-B-S. Jobs. One man stands ready to deliver change we desperately need. A man I'm proud to call my friend. A man who will be the next president of the United States, Barack America. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Is Kennedy Babylon 2 your last book? No, if I think of another topic for a book I want to write, I'll go for it. But I think it's the last of my Kennedy Babylon series. I made Kennedy Babylon 2 kind of long because I wanted to get everything in there. Now there's other stuff I could write about, but I'm Kennedy now. Since having the sleeve operation, do you miss not eating big meals? No, I don't. I can still eat what I used to eat. I just can't eat as much. I'm now very surprised how much I used to eat. I'm surprised at how much people I eat with consume. It's just hard to believe that I used to eat that much, but no, it's not a problem. How is Mr. Gooner since Pearl's passing? Mr. Gooner is drowning his sorrows in food. What is the most trouble you ever got into as a kid? My father was giving me grief one time up at Moosehead Lake in Maine, and I threw a rock at him. They, he didn't much like that. Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. 844-500-4242. That's the toll-free number of the Howie Car Show. If you'd like to join us here this afternoon, every uh, weekday afternoon. Antifa protesters trash Williamsburg Whole Foods Apple over the weekend. I thought, Whole Foods, that's... That's Amazon. That's Jeff Bezos. That's the Washington Post and Apple. They're those, they're they're cannibalizing their their own people here. Dozens of protesters, including suspected members of Antifa, rampaged through Williamsburg over the weekend, trashing several national chain stores and spraying anti-police graffiti. I feel sentiment for the Times, but this stuff is just senseless," said a an employee at Compass Real Estate, where they uh, they spray painted "Die Yuppie." on uh, there. They don't even know what they're doing. It's just destruction for destruction's sake. The irony of it is, I love this, this is the part, this is why I wanted to set up. The irony of it is, you can clearly tell that everyone on the video is white. And it's like, do you guys even know what you're doing this for? No, obviously, they don't know what they're doing. But they just, they know that they want to, uh, they, they, they want some free stuff. That's what it boils down to. 844-500-4242. That is the toll-free number of the Howie Car Show. And uh, let's see. Joining us now on the line is uh, Maryland congressional candidate uh, Kimberly Klaychik. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, Rush played her uh, the, the audio of her two Two minute fifty second uh, spot that she's made, and it's it's pretty amazing. We I, I tweeted it out earlier in the day. A, a demo, uh, Kimberly, thanks for being with us here on the Howie Car Show. No, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. 
Well, listen, I, I got a call this morning from a Democrat I know, actually, a Democrat in Massachusetts, kind of a conservative Democrat. He says, you got to see this video. He said, this is amazing, and uh, you, you should make sure that, uh, that uh, the White House knows about this video. And I watched it, uh, Kimberly. I, I think they should be playing this video at the convention next week. You know, it's, 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 oh, it's better than anything that was at the Democrats, uh, that the Democrats had last night, I think. You know, I heard about that. I, I didn't actually get to see the DNC convention because there was so much going on, but I heard it was a, a snooze fest. But if they could, if they could play that video, that would be awesome. Um, honestly, when we put that together, we had no idea that it was going to make such an impact. You know, we were basically just telling the truth, walking the streets of West Baltimore. Um, so to see this reaction, we are just uh, in shock, but obviously it's, we're thrilled at the same time. Well, how, haven't you made some other videos uh, in, uh, in, in, in Baltimore before this one? I, I have. It sounds like I have a problem with the camera, right? <laughs> I, uh, last summer, July 2019, uh, I was in, again, West Baltimore, talking to some of the residents about some of the issues they were having there, and they told me about all the trash piling up and how the city, uh, DPW, uh, which is you know the, the, the contractor that picks up the trash, wasn't actually doing their job. And so they were showing me around. Uh, we were taking videos of it. I was uploading it to my Twitter page for about a week, and I copied on it the mayor. I copied Congressman Cummings. Uh, I copied uh, Council President Scott, uh, President Brandon Scott, and no one actually said anything. And so Fox News called one like on Friday after it's been up there for a week and was like, hey, can you come in and explain to us what the heck is going on on your Twitter feed? <laughs> and I said, yeah, absolutely. And so I go in like on a Saturday morning. And President Trump happened to be watching, and he retweets it. He goes off, and he knows for a fact, like most of us know, you know, there's been a lot of federal funds sent to, you know, not just Baltimore, but that West Baltimore area because right. of the riots in 2015. And that money has yet to land to the ground. And so here you see these videos where they're not even picking up the trash. And it, it's crazy, but, you know, I'm so glad that he brought attention to it because now they are at least trying to do that part of it. The sad thing is, uh, Kimberly, that uh, parts of Fifth Avenue in Manhattan now look like uh, West Baltimore when you're walking through there with your red high heels and your red and your red dress on. Are, are you taking a lot of crap from the uh, moon bats about the the high heels and in, uh, in, as you walk down the street? Well, everybody that knows me knows I always have heels on. <laughs> so that, you know, to me, that was just me being true to myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm, like I tell people, I'm 5'4 with a size 9 foot. It's just not cute. And so I always have heels on to kind of, like, show that my feet are not that big. But, you know, people are like, hey, you know, that's you. This is such a real video because that's how you look every single day. That's how West Baltimore looks every single day. Um, so everything about that video was just so true. And uh, you're you're running uh, for the seat that was held by the late Elijah Cummings, and I think the Democrat is a former congressman too, Queasy uh, Mufami or whatever his name is. Uh, he's he's running again for the seat. He quit uh, a, a different seat, but he's he's your opponent in in November, correct? Correct, and he actually he quit this this very seat in 1996 and kind of handed it over to Congressman Cummings. Um, he went to go be the president at the NAACP, and then he was booted out there uh, for some missing funds. So, you know, this guy's got a history. There's and, a lot of that you know, going around in Baltimore politics, isn't there, Kimberly? <laughs> there is. You know, our mayor, our mayor was indicted for some pay-to-play. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of corruption in Baltimore, unfortunately. But, you know, that's why I say, you know, if you vote for a Republican, vote for somebody different that doesn't have friends in office you might actually get a, a different result. You know, we might get some people in there that can show everybody where this money has been going and actually implement it to where it's supposed to go. How many views has your, uh, has your video gotten? Um, I think it's, it's different on every platform. Obviously, my, my platform has always been Twitter, and um, it's right now it's at 4.2 4 million right now. Wow. Um, which not bad. You know, 22 hours ago is when we posted it. And I, I actually did not want to post it uh, 22 hours ago. I was like, wait a minute, we're going to post it at 445. Who looks at Twitter at 445? <laughs> and so, you know, talking to my manager, he was like, oh, just post it. You know, we'll see what happens. Have you and heard from the uh, have you heard from the Republican National Committee or the Trump campaign about uh, putting it up next week? 
Um, so I actually did get a call from the RNC last night. Kevin Daniels called and said, hey, we saw your video. We love it. Um, I just wanted to reach out to you and see, you know, is there any way we can help, which is, which is fabulous because they haven't helped, you know, prior to this. And so I said, okay, we'll definitely be in touch soon. But, you know, I haven't really heard anything else. Um, Donald Trump Jr., we were very happy when he retweeted it. So I think it's making its rounds, and hopefully we'll hear something in the next few hours. Well, that's great. So we, if, if people want to uh, see it, uh, I mean, I, I tweeted it out of my account. I retweeted it. So, But where where can people go if they uh, if they don't follow me and they just want to see it right now or, or later on today? So if you're saying if they want to see the video? Yeah. Yeah, it's right on my Twitter feed. It's on Facebook. Twitter is Kim K. Baltimore is the handle. Facebook and Instagram, it's Kimberly Klasik, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, and then Klasik, K-L-A-C-I-K. And I actually just loaded it to the YouTube channel because I totally forgot about that in the midst of all this chaos. (laughs) (laughs) So it is now Kimberly Klasik. So, you know, you can do it there as well. And if they want to go to your website and make a contribution or something like that, where, where do they go? Absolutely. Kim K for Congress.com and it's F O R Kim K for Congress.com. And you can also sign up there to volunteer. Um, I found out this morning we have 150 people ready to volunteer and do some phone banking for us. You know, it's a big district. We have over 500,000 people in this district. So we need all the help we can get. Uh, one of the texters says, can you ask Kimberly if they'll ever find out where the government aid went? See, I think it's easier to track down where what penitentiary the ba- Baltimore politicians are in, isn't it, the, the, for what they spent the money on? Absolutely. But you know what? If I get in office, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm also going to open up, I don't know if you remember, the slush fund book on Capitol Hill um, that took $17 million. Oh, I re- yeah. Of- yeah, the, for, yeah, all yeah. the uh, sexual harassment cases that were settled out of court. And, yeah, they, and uh, it's, uh, it's like the... Uh, yeah, it's it's sealed. You you have a better chance yeah. of uh, finding the uh, holy grail, the holy grail, than you do the <laughs> the names in that book. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, like seven million in taxpayer dollars. So I'm I'm trying to get my hands on that book asap. <laughs> well, that, that's great. Uh, you know, and uh, Kimberly uh, is is uh, is Queasy going to debate you, or is he just a uh, pretending you don't exist? Well, we've asked multiple times, but I think after this video, he can't pretend anymore. Um, he's got a lot of people, I think on his Facebook right now, asking him about me and and what his response is. So I think we might actually get a debate this time. Oh, that would be great. Tell just tell, give people an example, just an indication what, what you're doing as you're walking the streets down, down through there, uh, you know, all every, all these buildings are boarded up and you have this, the Mm -hmm. stats are popping up on the boarded up buildings uh, that you're talking about. Tell, explain to people what the video does. Yeah, so it just starts out with me saying, you know, you know, as right now the narrative in the media is all about Black Lives Matter. And I say, look, you know, this is a predominantly black neighborhood, and if black lives truly matter to Democrats, as they say, somebody please tell me why Baltimore City looks like this. And so I'm walking through the neighborhood, basically just showing how bad it is. And you can see it's like decades of decay. You know, a lot of the vacant homes have been vacant for 20, 30 years, and they've just sat there. Um, and so I just show, like, look, people live here. Children grow up here. They're supposed to play here. You know, you've got schools around here where it's just, it's, it's an absolute mess. And, you know, it looks like a, a place, some people even ask me if I was in America. You know, that's how bad it looks. Um, but I talk about the, the um, homicide rate, you know, just we're right now, I think we're at, uh, we're the most, I think we're the fourth dangerous city in the country, mm-hmm. um, might be third here soon. Uh, just the past year, we had over 348 homicides. Um, uh, before that, you know, this is all stemming from the Freddie Gray riots. We've had more homicides over 300 each year, uh, since 2015. So I felt so sorry worse. for that. I felt so sorry for that guy you interviewed that had three sons killed by gunfire oh, in, yeah. in the city, just in the city. Oh. Wow. Right. And that was actually, believe it or not, we were filming and he comes over and says, hey, what are you guys doing? And then we asked him about defunding the police because, of course, our city council is all about that. They're very progressive, as they call themselves. And he says, and I asked him about defunding police. He said, I'll stay on camera. I don't want to defund the police. And so we put the camera off and then he starts talking about his son. So we didn't even know that he had three sons killed until the camera was rolling. And so... 
you know, but his story is like many stories uh, in that area, unfortunately. So we need more police officers. We probably need more funding for police officers. Um, and we definitely need to respect them a lot more. But, you know, if, if people can watch the video, you'll see it. It basically, and there are a lot of people, I know a lot of people on the Democratic side uh, have been contacting my campaign and said, we don't like what she said, but there wasn't a lie in the video. Right. So right. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, it all, I think. The fact right? checker from the, boss, from the Washington Post would be all over you if there was anything that they could jump on. But I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see any, I don't know the ins and outs of Baltimore, but it didn't seem like you were taking too many liberties with the facts. I think uh, you you were right on target. Uh, Kim, Kim uh, Klasik, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you again before the uh, before the the uh, the election. And I, I sure hope uh, I sure hope they show that on uh, on TV. That would just be great. As many people as have seen it now, it would be it would just be great to, for the broadcast audience to get a look at that. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate it. If you haven't tried Super Beat Soft Chews yet, you're missing out. I had one right before I went on the air. It gives me a lift up. It uh, makes me uh, sharper, I think. And I, I know it's better for my, uh, for my blood pressure, for my uh, circulation. It's great. It tastes like candy, but it's really good for you. It comes wrapped up in a little uh, tin foil. So easy to take with you. You can take it when you leave in the morning in your house. Super Beet Soft Chews combine non-GMO beets with a powerful new ingredient, grapeseed extract. The grapeseed extract used in Super Beet Soft Chews has been clinically shown to be twice as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. Better blood pressure means more energy the way nature intended without the jittery caffeine or stimulants. Now you can take just two delicious chews a day anytime, anywhere to get the blood pressure support you need and the energy you want. I always have one right before I have my first cup of coffee in the morning, right when I wake up, it uh, opens my eyes. And then I have one before the show, as I said. I hope I got some left for the uh, to, for the we VIPs. We have six Super Beats left. We have six Super Beats left and so six I will not VIPs. Eat one right now. So, so we have one VIPs for each. Bring them in. Bring them in for the VIPs, okay. Grace. They love them. Grace loves them. We're, we're just going to have to order some more. Do what I did and support your heart health with delicious Super Beats soft chews. Get your Super Beats chews today at superbeatsradio.com slash Howie. And when you buy two bags, they'll throw in the third for free. That's superbeatsradio.com slash Howie. You can thank me later, VIPs, after you've enjoyed these delicious treats. I'm Howie Carr. Don't touch that dial. Howie Carr will be back after this. This hour of the Howie Car Show is brought to you in part by Folens BN of North Sutton, New Hampshire. Just 90 minutes from Boston on the shores of pristine Kezar Lake. Perfect for year-round relaxation. Book your stay at FolensBN.com. Howie says it all the time. When it comes to bad politicians, Massachusetts takes the cake. It is my honor to introduce to you your senator, my senator, Senator Elizabeth Warren. I know who I am because of what my mother and my father told me. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Governor Deval Patrick. And frankly, I got to tell you, with all the other things I'm worrying about, this is not one of them. We're going to be fine. I'm in charge. Please join me in welcoming our own Senator Ed Markey. The planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for our planets. The very first African-American congresswoman to be elected from Massachusetts, Ayanna Presley. We don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. Let's give them a great Waterloo reception. God, Perry. Uh, the Yankees posted the Boston Red Sox logo and they sang Sweet Adeline. With all the uncertainty in the world, feeling safe at home has never been more important. It's why I want to talk to you about Simply Safe Home Security. They're longtime friends of the Howie Car Show, and for good reason. Simply Safe has made it easy to finally get comprehensive protection for your home. There's no technician or salesperson that needs to come and disrupt your house. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two year contract. You just order online. Set it up yourself in under an hour, and your home is protected 24-7 with emergency dispatch for break-ins, fire, and more. All for just 50 cents a day. 
And we're not the only fans of Simply Safe. U.S. News and World Report named Simply Safe best overall home security of 2020. Go to simplysafehowie.com to try it out for yourself. That's simplysafehowie.com to make sure they know that our show sent you. That's simplysafehowie.com. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Is Kennedy Babylon 2 your last book? No, if I think of another topic for a book I want to write, I'll go for it. But I think it's the last of my Kennedy Babylon series. I made Kennedy Babylon 2 kind of long because I wanted to get everything in there. Now there's other stuff I could write about, but I'm Kennedy now. Since having the sleeve operation, do you miss not eating big meals? No, I don't. I can still eat what I used to eat. I just can't eat as much. I'm now very surprised how much I used to eat. I'm surprised at how much people I eat with consume. It's just hard to believe that I used to eat that much, but no, it's not a problem. How is Mr. Gooner since Pearl's passing? Mr. Gooner is drowning his sorrows in food. What is the most trouble you ever got into as a kid? My father was giving me grief one time up at Moosehead Lake in Maine, and I threw a rock at him. They, he didn't much like that. This is Alex from East Bridgewater, Mass. This is Ian in Sackle, Maine. This is John Zuko from Hampton, Mass. And this is The Howie Car Show. Eight four four five hundred forty two forty two. People are watching the video and the texting in and the, uh, the overriding theme is not guilty. <laughs> As I see that like three, four, five times on the, just on the screen. I haven't even scrolled down. Uh, Bruce from the Mets, just watch the video. She is awesome and not guilty. Just saying it's, she, she is pretty good. This is just really a, a good job. And, and I'm, I'm sure the president has seen it or he will see it very shortly. Probably uh, Don Jr. will tell him about it, but this is, I mean, this just sums it up what, what it is. We, we have a little bit of a, we have some of the uh, cuts. We'll play a little bit of it uh, here. Here's... Go to any Baltimore neighborhood and ask this question. Do you want to defund the police? No. No. Absolutely not. I had three sons killed in Baltimore City. And I think if we defund the police office, it's going to be worse than that. So, no, I'm opposed to that. What are you going to defund the police for? Why? How do you defend your city, your community? Families are losing people. It's not just Baltimore. The worst place for a black person to live in America is a Democrat-controlled city. It's 2020. Name a blue city where black people's lives have gotten better. Try. I'll wait. Yeah. I mean, that's what Trump said in 2016, and they said it was so insulting when he said, vote for me. You got nothing to lose. Look at how the Democrats have treated you for the last 50 years. You, you know, there's, there's no risk in voting for me. It can't get any worse. And I think a lot more people, People have realized that in, in the uh, black and the Hispanic communities because he's, he's way up. They, you look into the uh, internals of that CNN poll and uh, Trump's surge is coming with, with uh, non-white voters in the, in the swing states because they, they know that they got a better shot with a guy who, who's concerned about jobs rather than someone who's just concerned about, uh, you know, pandering. And that's all that's going on. Do we have one more cut? We have one more cut here from uh, Kim Klasik from the uh, bit, the video. Democrats think black people are stupid. They think they can control us forever. That we won't demand better and that we'll keep voting for them forever. Despite what they've done to our families and our communities. Are they right? I'm Kim Klasik and I'm running for Congress because I actually care about black lives. All black lives matter. Our communities matter. Baltimore matters, and black people don't have to vote Democrat. <laughs> 617 says, do you think the networks wouldn't cut away from that video? I, I don't know how they can cut away. If they're going to, if they're going to carry the, the Democrats, uh, PSAs as, as some of the, even the mainstream media were describing it, uh, some, some one of the, uh, some one of the alt left, uh, pundits one of them said last night 
this is like something, a commercial you would see on YouTube and you would immediately click out as soon as it got below the, the, where you could go to skip ad. And that, that summed it up. I thought, were were there any memorable moments last night? I mean, the thing is most memorable moments in, in any thing in the media are unscripted, right? I mean, that's why you watch, or you used to watch athletic events because you, ne- you never knew what would happen. And uh, that's, that's why you watch Saturday Night Live in the old days, because you might have something a little bit different happen. But uh, nothing, this is just, this is just pitiful. I guarantee you Trump's speech will be live. 844-500-4242. I'm Howie Carr. These days, a lot of companies are busier than a set of jumper cables at a West Virginia wedding trying to improve their brands. Brand names we've known and loved for years are vanishing before our very eyes. And while we can no longer visit the International House of Burgers, we can take comfort in knowing that the great Matthews Brothers brands won't change. That's because our wicked awesome windows and doors were named for real people. For example, our Walkett brand is named after the oldest founding brother of the company. Spencer Walkett Matthews began studying his craft at the age of 21. When he was 25 years old, he was joined by his brother Noah, then his brother Sanford, and founded the Matthews Brothers Company. Spencer Walkett was obsessed with quality, and he personally inspected every piece that left our factory those first crucial years. For 35 years, he stood at the helm of the company as we gained a reputation second to none for quality, consistency, and reliability. This is what Spencer Walkett Matthews stood for, and it's why we named our premier window line after him. You can learn more about our wicked awesome main-made windows and doors, but only at Better Lumber Yards and Window Professionals or on the web at MatthewsBrothers.com. That's Matthews Brothers with one T, America's oldest window manufacturer. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Did you have any pets when you were younger? I had a cat named Dexter. That was my first pet. And then I had possession of two poodles when I lived in Palm Beach, Princess and Frisky. They weren't really my dogs, but I took care of them. They lived with me. So they were my dogs. I loved those poodles. When you were a kid, what was the best gift you ever received? I got this uh, wooden fort from FAO Schwartz in Palm Beach, about the age of six or seven, 10 soldiers to go along with it. Such a cool fort. I had that fort for like maybe close to 10 years. What is your all-time favorite movie? Probably Goodfellas. I love Goodfellas. I love it even more than The Godfather. What is your favorite dessert? Oh, that's a tough one. Probably uh, chocolate ice cream, followed by vanilla ice cream, followed by coffee ice cream. Joe Biden accuses Trump of being a racist, but if you listen to Biden's comments, you would agree that he doth protest too much. If you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not, what do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? What are you the first mainstream African American who is articulate and bright and, and clean. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. That kid wearing a hoodie may very well be the next poet laureate. And not a gangbanger. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. God love you. You've been here all day. My Lord, you may feel like you're being incarcerated. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. I think the two-party system is good for the South and good for the Negro. They're going to put you all back in chains. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. You're listening to The Howie Carr Show. You've been hearing me talk about Super Beats for a while now, and I'm sure some of you are still thinking, why Super Beats? You could take it from me. The benefits of Super Beats are incredible. I take them twice a day, once in the morning when I get up, even before I have my first cup of coffee, and the other time in the afternoon, right before the show. It gives me a burst of energy. It's great for my blood pressure. It's good for circulation. It just makes you feel better. If that doesn't convince you, we can talk about the science behind Super Beats. Beats have nitrates. 
nitrates support better blood flow, and better blood flow equals better energy and efficiency throughout the body and even supports healthy blood pressure. But Super Beets does so much more than eating regular beets and is unparalleled compared to other beet powders. Just one scoop of Super Beets has the nitric oxide equivalent of three whole beets. Go to superbeetsradio.com slash Howie and try out Super Beets yourself. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. So now you've broken your elbow. Have you ever broken any other bones? When I was eight years old, I broke my leg. I was playing touch football in Portland, and a a big kid, a 15-year-old, tackled me. When I was in my 30s, I was going down the stairs, and one of the kids' toys was on the stairs, and I tripped on it and broke my foot. I lost a tooth playing touch football when I was just out of Deerfield. I got smacked in the jaw. My tooth went up and I still have a bridge, a crown from that mishap. I have a replacement hip and now I have a bunch of pins in my uh, left elbow. When do you plan to retire? I don't plan on retiring. As an old football coach once said, once you retire, there's only one big moment left. You know what that is. President Trump's life has changed a lot in the last couple of years. But one thing that remains consistent is love for a good nickname. What happened to Mini Mike? Where is he? Mini Mike, I've had him up to here. Sleepy Joe has no idea what he's even talking about. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Sleepy Joe, get off the stage, please. I don't think the guy's got a chance. Sleepy Joe, I don't think he's got it. I don't know. I think Sleepy Joe may be able to limp across the finish line. Crying Chuck. I don't want to say Crazy Nancy because if I say that, you're going to say it's a copy of Crazy Bernie and that's no good. Who that yet? Alfred E. Newman. You know, I thought Pocahontas was gone, left in embers. I should have saved the Pocahontas thing for another year. Did you ever hear of Pocahontas? It's Pocahontas Elizabeth Warren. Little pencil neck Adam Schiff. Got the smallest, thinnest neck I've ever seen. But Nancy Pelosi, I call her Nervous Nancy. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Bill Clinton said to Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary, do you think he calls her Crooked Hillary? My. You're listening to The Howie Carr Show. Are you aware that the Episcopal Archbishop of Washington and the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church nationally all denounced this police assault on the civil rights and civil liberties of the people? Did they do that before or after the fire was put out? Do you want to rephrase what you're doing? Because I think the word spying could cause uh, everybody in the cable news ecosystem to freak out. I'm not sure of all the connotations of that word that you're referring to, but, you know, unauthorized surveillance. Okay, thank you. Is, is, that, is that more appropriate in your mind? I, th- this is your call. I really did want to give you a chance to, to say it how you wanted to say it and make sure that you didn't uh, misspeak. How can you sit here and tell us, why should I investigate the president of the United States if you're not even aware of the fact concerning the president using the pardon or commutation power to swap the silence of a witness. Because we require, you know, a reliable predicate before we open a criminal investigation. Do you think that this body right here would rise up if they decided to go tonight and paint the Capitol building? This body, I'm not sure. Now's the perfect time to get a pair of premium wireless earbuds, and Raycon is the way to go. Raycon started about half the price of other premium brands on the market, and they sound just as amazing. And Raycon's everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. You get six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Perfect for conference calls, video chats, or binging podcasts. Raycon was founded by Ray J. Smith have already given Raycons their seal of approval. I love my Raycons, and Grace loves hers, too. Howie, I love my Raycons. Best birthday gift ever. I listen to much better music than she does, though. Hey, that's not true. Now it's your turn to see what the hype is all about. Go to buyraycon.com slash Howie. That's buyraycon.com slash Howie. Buyraycon.com slash Howie. And now... An interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. We went to the White House for the Christmas party. In your opinion, what was the highlight? The highlight of my trip to the White House with...
We walked into Trump International Hotel, which she'd been dreaming of going to, and her eyes were wide. And then when the president actually came down the stairs, her eyes were even wider. She was so in awe of being there. I really felt like King Farouk, you know? I felt like I was uh, giving, giving someone a really great gift that they couldn't get otherwise. You've had some really good interviews over the years. Which one was your favorite? I, I can't really... Better strap yourself in. It's time for the Howie Carr Show. We will get a heavy dose of hatred and rage and cult-like madness, psychosis, hysteria against all things Donald Trump. My dad was a healthy 65-year-old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump. And for that, he paid with his life. Don't you think you're laying it on a bit thick? Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. He is clearly in over his head. It is what it is. Yeah, no, she was over her head. And frankly, she should have made the speech live, which she didn't do. She taped it. And, you know, she gets these fawning reviews. I mean, this extraordinary speech. I mean, she's beautiful. Ah. I mean, it was so beautiful. And, you know, she wasn't just putting the president down. She was trying to pick the country up. Ah. Who's your captain? Howie Carr. I'm a lifelong Republican. Well, you say that. But that attachment holds second place to my responsibility to my country. That's why I've chosen to appear at this convention. Sure, that's the reason. We closed a couple of DCR pools in Lawrence over the weekend. We've done a bunch of things with uh, local communities around mask ambassador programs, around um, sort of enhanced presence on local beaches. Can't stop Charlie Parker! Unchained and unstoppable. I have legislated on racial justice. I have stood with civil rights heroes like the late John Lewis, like Dolores Huerta, like Martin Luther King III. She called me on on all right, and you're standing there celebrating her. Oh, this is awkward. Rump swabs, hacks, and moon bats beware. It's Howie Carr. Welcome to the Howie Carr Show. And this is live, unlike the Democrat National Convention. And I think I know how to pronounce struggling. Unlike Michelle Obama, she seems to be channeling uh, Joe Namath, the former uh, New York Jets quarterback, struggling. If we see someone suffering or struggling, we don't stand in judgment. Struggling. Take it away, Joe Namath. Struggling. 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 I think the struggling in the ratings, from what I've heard, the overnights, People just don't seem to be that interested. Now, they could watch the Bruins game, a playoff game. Or they could watch the Red Sox uh, lose, what, for the seventh time in a row to the New York Yankees? Or you can literally watch paint dry, and it would probably be more entertaining. Yes, I think so. I've just never heard of a lineup so not youthful and energetic. It's like, oh, we're going to have John Kerry. We're going to have Speaker Nancy Pelosi. We're going to have Chuck Schumer. Aren't they trying to capture the youth? Isn't that what they always say? This is what they roll out. It's like bingo night at the nursing home. And I'm not trying to be mean. Well, you know, I used to like Super Bowl halftimes because they they would have groups that I knew and, you know, I'd listen to. Mm -hmm. But that ended about 20 years ago, right? So last night they put on... A remake, and a very poor remake at that, of Buffalo Springfield, for what it's worth, which was an okay song back in 1966. How does it go again? Give me the rhythm. There's something happening here. Oh. <laughs> what it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to beware. Oh, the, you know, you know, I was 14. I wasn't used to seeing guys with guns. A couple years later, it was just something that happened every day. It, was, it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, the thing is, just to go back to your analogy about the Super Bowl, 
that stuff drives me crazy when there's like an old person watching the Super Bowl and they say something like, they should have brought Paul McCartney back out. That's what the that's what people want to see. Right. No, they don't. I don't care that you guys have don't you like J Lo, but people ever... want to see J Lo. I didn't know you we, you and I had watched the Super Bowl together. Oh Only God, I wouldn't say Paul crazy. McCartney. I'd say Keith Richards. It's just it's like read the room. You know what I mean? You are not the demo for the Super Bowl halftime show. And then and then the thing was then they they had this. Uh, it's it's some black guy was singing. I don't. I have no. Again, I'm showing my age. I don't know who it was. And so then they would cut in to this white, ancient guitarist every time they said the man. And so I was confused, and I thought, is that ancient guitarist who looks like he's 75 years old? Turns out it's Stephen Stills, by the way. Is that the man? Is that the man <laughs> with the guitar? Yeah, it was I, very strange. And I think that was like the highlight of the night. That I was think, the highlight? I think that was the most exciting part. It's usually the musical interlude. That's usually what gets people going. Who's gonna Who's gonna be appearing tonight? The coasters. I think tonight is the Speaker drifters. Pelosi. I think John Kerry. Um, I was just looking at the lineup and I was thinking, oh my gosh, you couldn't pay me. You could pay me, but it would it would be a lot. It'd be a lot of their fundraising budget to get me to sit there and watch that all night. Ugh, terrible. And plus, half of it's on Zoom. So it's like you're at work on a Zoom call, except you're on with Speaker Grace, Pelosi. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show my age again here. Whatever happened to Skype? When did Zoom replace Skype? Or did Zoom buy Skype? Or how, what happened? I think they are honestly just as surprised as you. When this whole thing happened and they took off, they were probably... I've seen a lot of memes and stuff where the Zoom people are like, how did this happen? Well, what, what made people choose us? As opposed, Is Skype still around? Oh, yeah, it's still around, Howie. But nobody talks about Skype anymore. No. But it's like your fax like, machine. Like, like no one talks America about the fax, online. but it still exists. It's, it's yesterday's news. Yes, indeed. But right now we don't have yesterday's news. We have Grace's news. Um, and I do want to talk about the convention a little bit, mostly because Bill Clinton is set to speak tonight, and a story just broke. New photos show Bill Clinton getting massage from Epstein accuser. He's not naked or anything. He's at the airport. Wait a second. I thought he said, didn't he claim that he never went down to uh, the, uh, it, you know, the Orgy Island in, in the Virgin Islands so on I, the Lolita Express? Howie, I'm going to break this down, okay? Because this weekend, I watched the Jeffrey Epstein documentary on Netflix. And there were several photos of an, a trip to, um, I, I think it was an AIDS trip or something. It was Chris Tucker, Bill Clinton. They all went on the private plane owned by Jeffrey Epstein. The Lolita Express, as it's known. A man who worked on the island said, I saw Bill Clinton on the island. He said, I saw him eating lunch. And But here's the thing, and it really bugged me, because all these women were getting up and they were saying all these things that happened to them, which I fully believe, and I totally feel bad for all of those women. They're all victims. But every time it would come up about Bill Clinton, they would say, uh, but I n never saw him do anything. He just came for lunch. So all of these people are on pedophile island and Bill Clinton flew in for a fish taco and then left. That makes no sense. Like he came for a hamburger and then was like, but I got to go. Doesn't he deny that he was there at all? But the Secret yes. Service record should put the lie to that, right? Because he, he's an ex-president. He has Secret Service protection. He has to have Secret Service with him, he's I believe, doesn't logs. he? He's on yeah. the flight logs. Yeah, yeah right. That's so what I thought. Times. Yeah. Yeah, so he's so this girl, um, her name is um, Shantae Davies. She was in the documentary I watched this weekend. And she says that he said to her, would you mind giving it a crack? Because he needed his back cracked and he was falling asleep a in crack. the chair. <laughs> the picture, it does, it's not, it looks just like a normal, it's, it's not, you know. Lewd or they anything. done photoshopped that. They, first they done it to my friend Prince Andrew, and now they done it to me. Oh my God, that Prince Andrew Photoshop thing. He was in the documentary, obviously. <laughs> the whole thing about those weren't my hands. Those are, are look fatter than my hands. Like, bro, you have the whole royal family behind you. Come up with something better than that. Then your little sausage links. <laughs> Why shouldn't he should be moving to the uh, to the Gulf state there with the the King of Spain, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a lot more to be ashamed of than the King of Spain. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I think uh, don't even get me going on that. The Queen must be so. She must be looking at all of her children like, where did I go? Wrong? I think she kind of liked him though, didn't she originally? Well, yeah. I think compared to Char uh, King Charles or Prince, Prince Charles. Charles. <laughs> 
he probably seemed like a real, you know, King Charles. You're getting nice confused kid. with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Far more charismatic though, those King Charles. Um, but yeah, so Bill Clinton is speaking tonight, and I, I know I wrote this in my column this past weekend, but I do think it's important to note that they will only give Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who, no matter how you slice it. She has over 8 million followers mm -hmm. on Twitter. She is a huge presence with the young people in the Democrat Party. Right. They will only give her 60 pre-recorded seconds. And yet, they have the king creep, and they will give him a microphone and let him go. Uh, how many minutes does he get? It I doesn't thought everybody say. had the same number of minutes, or they had a, a I think hour, he's live, though. That's what the vibe I'm getting. But I could be wrong. I could. I'm just saying, in general, if you're going to give her 60 seconds, at least don't put him up, too. <laughs> Because that's a real slap in the face. Like, oh, you only get 60 seconds. And by the way, the perv's going to come up after we, you. Well, our poll question today, I'll give you a hint for the for the new uh, viewers out there, is is who would you like to have a drink with of all the people who are speaking at the convention? And we were going to put uh, AOC in there. But then Grace pointed out that all the, uh, all the guys would say, AOC. See, here's the thing. At least, at least you could look at her and, uh, you know. I know how our audience minds work <laughs> to a T. But my other thing is, Howie and I have different ideas with poll questions. I like to give poll questions that are so painful, almost like would you rathers, that people can't decide and they go catatonic. Howie doesn't like that. And Howie always says, you have to give the option of can I, you know, well, what do you always say? None is of the above. An is option. suicide an option? <laughs> but no, that's the, that's the mark of a good poll question. Suicide is not an option. <laughs> Well, a couple of people have already uh, uh, texted in that they say they can't even take part in the poll question today. It's so uh, offensive. I would, I think if I had it's, to choose. Yes, I guess is the right word. And I've really been thinking about this. If I had to choose, I think I would go with Nancy Pelosi. Because I think, I think she would pick up the tab. Maybe. And at that point, that's all I'm looking for. That's all I'm getting out of that sit down is maybe someone's going to buy me a vodka soda. <laughs> I think she's pretty cheap. I think she... Well, that's the risk she I got to take. Doesn't she have a jet? Doesn't she have a government jet? And she was complaining she wanted, like, a Johnny Walker Blue yes. on the jet. She was complaining they didn't have enough uh, high-end scotch, right? That's the thing. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Johnny Walker Blue, it's like you get a jet and you can have any alcohol you want, and that's what you choose. It's expensive. That's the thing. It, has, it doesn't have anything to do with taste. It's just having a, an expensive type of booze. That's Casamigos, all it is. Casamigos, Tito's. I would have that too. Gosh. Just expensive stuff. By the way, guys, Grace's News is brought to you by Toyota of Portsmouth, the house of value. I absolutely love my new RAV4 XLE. All the VIPs, you can see it outside. It's so beautiful. Has tan leather seats, navy on the outside. I feel like Nancy Pelosi driving in a private jet. Um, but what's really amazing about this car is that where I got it, the guys there, Jim Boyle, Brad Austin, they're such nice people. They will treat you like family. Tell them I sent you. They're located just south off the Portsmouth traffic circle off 95. Go to toyotaofportsmouth.com if you want to check it out first and visit them at the showroom. Tell them I sent you. Tell them you listen to Howie. They listen to the show every day. They will treat you like a king. So make sure you check out Toyota of Portsmouth, the house of value. If you're thinking of replacing your carpets due to pet stains and odors, you must try Genesis 950 first. It breaks down the bonds of stains and odors so they're gone from carpets and padding for good. You can use it in a carpet cleaning machine, and it's green, so it's safe for family and pets. It was the go-to cleaner for when Mr. Gooner had an accident, as older pugs often do. My daughter just bought a, uh, a new place, uh, and I, we uh, took some Genesis 950 down to her. She had some stains on the rugs. She didn't think it was going to work. She was uh, skeptical, but it, it just took it right off the stains on the, on the rugs. It's Genesis 950 is really good. Uh, before you purchase new carpeting, you must try Genesis 950. One gallon of industrial strength Genesis 950 makes up to seven gallons of cleaner, and it's not just for pet stains. It's a disinfectant that kills viruses. It's also great for kitchens, garages, grease stains, wheels, tires, and more. Save yourself the trouble of going to the store and seeing your new favorite cleaner sold out again. Order it online. It's made in America, and as we like to say, buy American, support America. Order a gallon direct at Genesis950.com. 
Enter code Howie to get more than a $10 value in savings, including free shipping and a free spray bottle with a one-gallon purchase of Genesis 950. Go to Genesis950.com and enter code Howie. I'm Howie Carr. Keep it here. The captain will be back after this. Are we starting to feel bad for Joe Biden? Sorta. Are we going to play his gaps anyway? <laughs> of course. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Now we need to stand behind Jamie Harrison, the next president of the United States Senate. I'm looking forward to appointing the first African American woman to the United States Senate. Just like here in California, I mean, here in Nevada. Back in the, in the spring, late fall, or at least, I mean, late spring. Late winter, early fall. Early, anyway, you know what I mean. Look, tomorrow's Superstar Tuesday. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go. You know the you know the thing. <laughs> it says you cannot have 20, 30, 40, 50 clips in a weapon. We'll see who's sleepy. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, thank you. All right, Chuck, thank you very much. Uh, all right, uh, it's Christmas. Sometimes I wake up and I think it's... 1920 and not 2020. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. He's the gaff that keeps on giving. Here's one minute of former Vice President Joe Biden. You teachers who touched them, figuratively speaking, well, you've, I hope you touch them and tell them how much you love them, too. But my point is, my point is, when you, when, when you touch their hearts. I get in trouble with some of the things I say, but I want to tell you, just be straight up. If I'm your president, with me, it starts here in my gut, goes to my heart, and then I articulate it. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand, and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight, and then watch the hair come back up again. $1.2 billion. So you go ahead and you stack spaghetti sauce at a store in, 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 in a supermarket. You control the guy or the woman who runs the run, run, brings out the carts on, 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 on a forklift. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Hi, this is Val from Longmeadow, Mass. Hi, this is Tony and Pietra from Havel, Massachusetts. This is Myrna in Fairfax County, Virginia, and this is the Howie Carr Show. <laughs> okay, here's today's poll question. We kind of gave you a tease for it. Today's poll question is sponsored by our friends at MassFiscal.org. MassFiscal has led the charge against tax increases here in the Bay State, most recently opposing the governor's horrible TCI gas tax. It's not enough that we have the highest unemployment rate in the nation. He wants to double the gas tax. Sign up for free at massfiscal.org now, massfiscal.org. So, Jared, what's the poll question? What are the results thus far? If you had to choose. Had. Had to choose. Suicide, not an option. <laughs> Which one of these DNC speakers would you hang out with for the night? Senator Bernie Sanders John Kasich, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, John Forbes Kerry, Senator Chuck Schumer, or Governor Gavin Newsom? See, I'm voting for John Kerry because I have had a few with him at a, many, many, many years ago. And he owes me a few. Not that he would be picking up the tab. But I, I, I know... You know what he told me, Grace? You'd be, you're gonna, this is going to fascinate you. What? He told me something about his past. He was in Vietnam. 
<laughs> oh wow, really? Did you know that? Yeah, John Kerry. He he doesn't like to talk about it very much, you know. <laughs> but he told me he was in Vietnam. He has nightmares sometimes. Wow. I have nightmares too <laughs> about sitting on the stool at the Red Hat on Beacon Hill next to John Kerry. Did he say he forgot his wallet? How did how did it? How did it come to be that you ended up paying for it? Because when I think of two people not likely to reach for their wallet. Are you saying I have arms like an alligator? <laughs> no, you actually, Howie Sneaky is very generous. But I mean, your on-air persona is arms like an alligator. But did he just say, oh, I don't have anything on me? Or can I, I sign a, I can I I sign just, a menu? I just did it. I did, you know, he, his office was right next to, I was at the at Channel 7, the TV station, and he, he was right next door. It was less and, painful just to get it over with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually vote for Elizabeth Warren because I'm starting to think that maybe she'd bring Bailey, and then at least I could see her dog. So what... So John Forbes Kerry is coming in at 9%. 9%. No. Senator Elizabeth Warren is at 4%. Wow. Leader in the clubhouse is Bernie Sanders. 34% of the audience say they would hang out with Bernie for a night. It would be like hanging he's, out he's with Larry not David. Bring, listen, folks, he's not bringing Ben and Jerry's with him. You're not getting any ice cream out of this <laughs> day. Some good weed, though, I'm sure. Um, speaking of the people... The Democrats. There's a lot of talk about Kamala Harris. Jared told me this earlier today. She chose her Secret Service code name. I didn't know you got to choose your own nickname. I, I, I thought Jared understands this a lot more than I do. Yes. So um, when you're given Secret Service protection, you get each family uh, gets assigned a letter, and they give you a preset list of certain number of names you can pick from that. So. The Harris, the Harris, uh, they got the letter P apparently, and she chose her Secret Service code name of Pioneer, or should I say, not so Secret Service code name anymore? I know Pioneer. Now we all know it. What was wrong with Poodle? <laughs> Pipsqueak. Pineapple. Mm. Poser. Poser. Well, I want to tell you some other ones because I don't know if you know this. Obama's Secret Service code name is Renegade. And Joe Biden. I would, I would think it would be 57. Joe Biden. 57 states. <laughs> Joe Biden's a Celtic. I thought it was Cobra. President Trump. That's a Chris Plant joke, I guess. <laughs> That's what he says. I believe them. Stupid me. President Trump's is Mogul. Mogul. Okay, I get that one. And Vice President uh, Mike Pence is Hoosier. He's from Indiana. Yeah. What would yours be, Howie? Well, you know what uh, they, you know what my mob nickname was. I was named by a, a gangster in Providence. Trash man. Trash man. I just don't feel like would that, that would be? inspire the Secret Service enough to protect you. Well, I could you go gotta go help trash school. man. How about my high school nickname? Coos. That would be a good one. Coosie. <laughs> Echo Bay's trash man. Um, on Andrew the Cuomo is penning a new book about the, his coronavirus response. Who? He's Andrew Cuomo. The governor of New York. He's Is that going to be another one of these books with all the blank pages? He's going to talk gonna be about dedicated what happened. to the 10,000 people he killed in the nursing homes? It's called American Crisis. I, I think it should be called Meatball in Charge. I wonder if his brother is going to write the, the double forward. entendre, see? Yeah. <laughs> Fredo's going to buy the first copy. <laughs> Fredo is my younger brother. I'm Howie Carr. Do you have no water, poor water quality, or low pressure? This is Howie Carr. Call the local water service experts, Skillings & Sons. They're ready with 24-hour service with no extra charge for after-hours calls and a fleet of trucks stocked with parts to make sure you're not without water. With over 50 years of experience, they take pride in having a family of employees that are the best in the business. For all things water, Skillings & Sons is there for you. SkillingsAndSons.com Recently, I had Global Marble and Granite install new gorgeous marble countertops in my home. Global Marble granite and quartz on Cape Cod. They also serve Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and all of New England. People are spending more time in their homes, so now is the best time to upgrade your kitchen or baths. Your home is your biggest investment, and Global Marble and Granite is ready to increase the value. Visit their site and see my kitchens before and after shots. Go to GlobalCapeCod.com or call 508-771-1001. The Democrat Party is so full of loonies, social justice warriors, 
progressives, whatever you want to call them, that sometimes certain moon bats get overlooked. So let's take this moment to shine the woke spotlight on Crazy Maisie Hirono. I am not going to be a fool to Mitch McConnell's uh, shenanigans. Why should any of us? And uh, it's not just a dog whistle, it's a bullhorn. Bullhorns. It's racism. It's basically, for many people, it's uh, um, anti-Semitic. It's white supremacy. Why not take a stand and vote yes for it? It seems like you're trying well, to have it care. both ways. Not be hung well, by it politically, but also not say that you don't support it. I disagree with you, Katie, that uh, why should we engage in the kind of, of, of sham shenanigans that Mitch McConnell is really good at. I'm confused. This was just a sham. Guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of actions? It's the men in this country, and I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. I think the, the noose is closing, and, you know, Giuliani is like a loose cannon, and so is the president, frankly. Hair loss is not one of life's more enjoyable experiences. If you're looking to fill in your hairline or reverse years of hair loss, DiStefano Hair Restoration will create a result that will be a transformative experience. The result of my IGT procedure was quite remarkable. I now have fuller, thicker hair so I can even wear it a bit longer. There are a few major decisions I've made in my life that I wish I did sooner. My hair restoration is number one. It was by far one of the best moves I've ever made. My hair looks awesome, and the confidence from having a full head of hair again has left me feeling great. I used to look in the mirror and dreaded seeing my ever-increasing ball spot. Now, when I look in the mirror, I see the new me with a full head of thick hair. For information on how to make the same choice I did, go to hairman.com slash Howie. What are you waiting for? More hair to fall out? Get the hair you've always wanted hairman.com slash Howie. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. How did you come up with the name VB? My first producer and I both had steady girlfriends or we were married or whatever, and VB was always saying that we were whipped, if you know what I mean. Finally, I said, you don't even have a girlfriend. I've never seen you with a female. As a matter of fact, I don't think you have ever had sex. You are just a virgin boy. What is your biggest fear? That Donald Trump will not be reelected in 2020 and that some horrible Democrat will come in and finish off the destruction of this once great country. Out of all of your daughters, who is the least like you and why? Probably Charlotte, even though we went to the same high school, Deerfield Academy. She uh, has a different sense of her responsibilities than I do. Let me put it that way. She has a different uh, regard for money. She's not a cheap bastard, in other words. The word that's helping Elizabeth Warren get through her so-so campaign? So. Will you raise taxes on the middle class to pay for it, yes or no? So, so the way I see this, so, so, so understand, taxing income is not going to get you where you need to be the way taxing wealth does. So, no, no, and I'm not here to criticize other Democrats. So, so my proposal is that uh, student loan debt would be canceled up to $50,000. So, Elizabeth, can you put this issue to bed and tell us whether or not you are, in fact, a member of a minority group? So, I, uh, middle class families. Why did you list yourself as an American Indian on, on this Texas bar application? So, so, um, I grew up out in Oklahoma. So, uh, so, look. Why did you check check those boxes? So live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. 844-500-4242. That's the toll-free number of the Howie Car Show. Mainstream media members pan DNC. Feels like one long ad on YouTube. Please talk me off the ledge. <laughs> Unwatchable. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt Stoller, whoever he is, uh, he's an author, I guess. This convention so far makes me think the Democrats are the party ready to lead America into the 1980s. <laughs> Mark Hemingway, I think he's Molly Hemingway's husband. I was just thinking this high energy DNC needs a smooth jazz break. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Dave Parkman, he says, I, again, I don't know who this guy is. He's a radio and TV host. Someone please talk me off the ledge. I want to win in the first 22 minutes of this DNC. I'm scared. Can someone tell me how great this is or something? <laughs> Elvia Diaz, holy cow, I'm dying. Message is good, but wow, just unwatchable. How can the message be good if it's unwatchable? They, they don't, those, those two things don't go hand in hand. If you, uh, if, if you can't keep the, uh, the fannies in the seats, as they used to say, uh, all else is, uh, is, is nothing. 844-500-4242. I'm looking to get some, uh, I'm just looking at some cuts here, but I, there's nothing really that... Uh, to, to really say. Let's play Trump in Wisconsin yesterday. This is a cut we didn't play, and then we'll go to the phone lines. Uh, cut 10. Do you want the failed policies of Mayor Bill de Blasio or Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Chicago, or Mayor Jacob Fry brought to every city and town in this nation? If left-wing Democrats can't run a city, why on earth would you let them run your country? We have such, such incredibly run cities, such incredibly run cities. The problems we have are the radical left. Isn't he? So Donald Trump also announced that he was going to be pardoning Susan B. Anthony, the uh, woman suffragette leader. Apparently she was arrested in uh 1872, I think, for uh, for trying to vote, or be, maybe she did vote. I don't know if she disguised herself or what. But he pardoned her today, and uh, they, so th this is how crazy the Democrats are. The, the Lieutenant Governor of New York, who I'd never heard of, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. She is, of course, she's Cuomo's Lieutenant Governor. She is deeply troubled. She's deeply troubled that Susan B. Anthony has been pardoned. Now, I, I don't know if she's like got a Ouija board in Albany and, and she's communicating with Susan B. Anthony if Susan B. Anthony wanted a commutation so she could prove her innocence like Michael Flynn. Or I, I don't know. I don't know what they, or, or was that Roger Stone? But anyway, this is the Lieutenant Governor of New York. Listen. I have stopped long ago trying to figure out why this president does what he does other than i believe this was done with malice this was not malice. done to honor the legacy of susan b anthony or the countless other individuals who led the long march for civil rights for women and civil rights for all i don't know why he did what he did but i assure you it is not with the best interests of americans at heart i tell you if i ever get jammed up Someone can pardon me with malice anytime. Do you think they'll keep me out of the can? I'll tell you. Mal par a pardon with malice. Those are words you never thought you would hear in the same sentence. But there they are. Kevin, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Kevin. Hi, Howie. Hi. <coughs> I've got... <clears throat> oh, he's gone. John, you're next with Howie Carr. Hi, Howie. How you doing? Good. Okay, I got one for you. Why is it all these uh, predominant black people are uh, half white, but yet they consider themselves just black? Aren't they mulattoes? Well, that's the, I mean, that's an old, that's an old expression. I, I guess you're, you're not supposed to. Well, I, I don't know if it's uh, on PC. Yeah, it probably is on PC at the very least to call someone that. But uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a uh, there was something going around the internet last weekend that uh, supposedly there's a uh, the birth certificate for uh, uh, Kamala Harris lists her as Caucasian, and uh, Reuters didn't know if that was real or not. They said they were go reaching out to the uh, Harris campaign to see if she was uh, uh, listed as a Caucasian when she was born, but I, I don't know what the answer to that is. Uh, we'll uh, we'll let you know. I, I I assume that they're not uh, they're not responding to that uh, inquiry from Reuters. I was surprised Reuters was actually trying to find it out. Thanks for the call, John. Matt, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, for all the uh, production of last night, you know what they could have done for free during all of that? What all the speakers was was just smile. If they smiled and they didn't basically yell at us to basically vote for Trump, 
we we might have changed our minds, but no one smiled for two hours. They just basically told us how horrible Trump is and how horrible the deplorables are, and that we made the wrong decision voting for somebody who can't be president. That was my takeaway. Yeah. Do, do you think there were any undecided voters, though, tuning in? I, I, got no. to, I don't think... I just think that was for hardcore anti-Trump people, and I was just reading you their, the comments of some of them in the media, and they, they couldn't even stand it, Matt. I, I think it was people that watch MSNBC and CNN each night, and they got those people, and I think the convention has a little bit of entertainment to it, the live the live authenticness to it, even though it, you know it's still the Democrats getting up there, but it's something, it's, it, it's live entertainment, it's like a sporting event. The last night. Yeah, no, you're, you're I right. I mean, I can think of, uh, you know, I remember the 68 convention in Chicago. I was just a kid, but I remember, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Daley screaming at the uh, at, at the, uh, Senator Ribicoff from Connecticut. You know, just down there yelling and screaming and and uh, uh, William F. Buckley and uh, Gore Vidal threatening to punch each other out. In the, uh, and then they switch over to the park where the cops were battling the demonstrators. And I can even remember like 19, what was it, 1988, I guess it was, in Atlanta. Because I, I, I was there for that one because it was Mike Dukakis. And uh, Bill Clinton made a, uh, made a speech and it just went on and on and on. And it was, he was, I think, the last guy of the night and they have, because of the security, even then, they had the doors locked, so you couldn't get out. Everybody, and I wasn't the only one, there were 5,000 people wanted to get out of that arena, and they were just listening to Bill Clinton go on and on. And for most of us, that was the first time we ever heard the guy, at least live. And he had to go on Johnny Carson afterwards and apologize to the nation for, for telling such a long-winded story. So Matt's right. I mean... There, there's, there's some entertainment. There used to be some entertainment value, but I think this is it. I mean, I think the conventions are all done. They're kind, it's kind of like uh, you know, uh, the, a lot of these uh, high-end retail districts, like Fifth Avenue and like Major League Baseball, <laughs> you know, <laughs> movie theaters. There's, there's some stuff that wasn't, uh, wasn't in the, the best of uh, financial health to begin with, and this has just been uh, the, the end of the line. And I think conventions are, are one of them. Uh, 844-500-4242. Jack, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Jack. You there, Jack? Yes, I'm I'm here. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to mention that the the DNC convention was was ridiculous and uh I thought it was interesting that the sticker behind Michelle Obama uh didn't have anything to do with or didn't mention uh Kamala Harris, as we call her in California. Um, I also want to mention something else, too. I, I live in Southern California, and there are a ton of people that are just simply afraid to say or have a Trump sticker or flag or anything like that right. uh, because of the political climate that we're that we're living in right now so that's not just southern uh, california jack uh, the, the cato institute did a poll a nationwide poll a couple of weeks ago and they said that uh 62 percent of the respondents uh, and that was it was across the board maybe more more republicans than democrats but 62 percent of them were afraid to express their opinion to anybody other than their uh family and their close friends jack yeah i, I think that's going to be i think that's going to be the deciding factor and and uh um, I just, you know, uh, man, I'll tell you, if you look at the Bible, uh, God used a lot of imperfect men to do his work, and uh, certainly uh, Trump's not a perfect man, but he's the right man at the yeah. right time. I, I agree. I agree totally, Jack. I, I remember in uh, 2016, uh, Tucker Carlson didn't have a show yet, but uh, he, was a, he was a weekend guy for Fox, and he wrote a piece, I forget what publication he wrote it for but he was talking about how uh, all these people all the casages of the world and the romneys were saying oh how can the evangelicals be with trump and uh, tucker carlson said the evangelicals they're not looking for a spiritual leader they're looking for a bodyguard and i thought that that summed it up perfectly and it's it's truer today than it was in 2016. they just they just want or and not just the evangelicals any anybody who's a 
for lack of a better term, a traditional American of, of any race, color, creed, just wants to keep the government off their back. And that's not what the Dems want. And for Kasich to go up there and say that, uh, that, that uh, Biden is not going to be a radical uh, after uh, Bernie has basically been bragging for weeks about how they've, uh, they've, they've sold them this pig in a poke of this, uh, this platform that's calling for all these, these far left-wing, radical, uh, fundamental transformations of America. Thanks for the call, Jack. Donald, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Donald. Yeah, did Grace say that Cuomo's going to write a book on how he handled the COVID crisis in the nursing homes? <laughs> yes. I, I know I, I know. it sounds like satire. It sounds like the Babylon Bee, but it's true, Donald. It's true. Now, he should go before the Hague for crimes against humanity, for God's sake. I, I know it's it's amazing. He he is uh, stonewalling uh, everybody in Albany. All, even the Democrats in the legislature, some of them want to have an investigation of what he did. And he he's uh, he's he's stonewalling it just like you stonewalling all the uh, corruption investigations with all the billions that they wasted up in Buffalo and the third Cuomo brother went to prison for it. And he, and now he's going to write this book and he and and he's going to he's going to blame everybody other than uh, Trump, other than himself. How about the fact last night, Donald, that he called it the European virus? Well, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's just beyond, yeah. I know. And there are charts in the, the CDC has charts showing that the nursing home people are also more vulnerable to flus and everything. So he should have known that that was a huge mistake and I know. I think it went on for 43 days. They were uh, and they were threatening the nursing home operators with all kinds of uh, dire consequences if they didn't take in COVID-19 positive people. And at the same time, at least for part of the uh, this six weeks, I guess it was, they had that hospital boat in the Hudson River and they had the Javits Center. And I also think they had a field hospital or two in Central Park. So they didn't have to send them to these nursing homes. But Cuomo just screwed up, and he, and he's, he just he just gets a total pass, not just on CNN where his brother works, but all these networks. The, the New York Times doesn't give him nearly the uh, grief they should. The, the New York Post has done mo more of the hard reporting than the, than the New York Times with a fraction of the staff. Thanks for the call, Donald. 844-500-4242. I'm Howie Carr. Don't touch that dial. Howie Carr will be back after this. This hour of the Howie Car Show is brought to you in part by the Barley House in Concord and Northampton, New Hampshire, bringing people together for a great time and great food, including fresh ground burgers. Their amazing staff is determined to make your day better. Check out thebarleyhouse.com. I recently had a dental emergency, and where did I go? Perfect smiles. I've said this before, but this reminded me again of what a perfectionist Dr. Houghton is. He is a veneer engineer, a world-class dental artist. Being on TV, it's important that I look my best. Dr. Houghton did that for me, and he can do it for you, too. Right now, when a lot of people don't want to go into the city, Perfect Smiles is conveniently located in Nashua, New Hampshire, and parking is free. I was impressed to see all the state-of-the-art safety protocols that Perfect Smiles has taken since the virus. You'll feel safe and confident when you visit Perfect Smiles. Call 1-844-A-PERFECT-SMILE, 1-844-A-PERFECT-SMILE, or go to HowieCarsShow.com and click on the Perfect Smiles banner. You can also see my video at PerfectSmiles.com. Perfect Smiles. Change your smile. Change your life. He's New England's talk radio king. He's Howie Carr. The only French term I like is sans culotte, without trousers. I used to describe Ted Kennedy as sans culotte. Because uh, he, cause after the O'Barr incident, when he was wandering around down on the beach, I, after with his 20th uh, scotch tumbler of the day in his hand, uh, stumbling around with an off. He was just there, as uh, as the uh, Michelle Casson, Patches Date said, he was just there without trousers. Or... Or as we say in Paris, sans culotte. We've seen nothing that we can work, that I can work with President Bush on, and I'm disappointed because I thought 
that there might be some interest because of what he said in the campaign. President Bush, this is your brain. This is your brain on Botox. Okay, that's the lesson of that one. We all shop online, and now you can do it a better way with Honey. Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. Just download Honey to your computer and shop on all your favorite websites like normal. When you check out, just click the Apply Coupons button that pops up. Wait a few seconds for Honey to scan its database of all the working coupons on the web. Then watch your price drop. Honey works on nearly every online store, including Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Macy's, Etsy, and more. And Honey has found over $2 billion in savings for its users. That's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome Store. It's 100% free to use and installs in seconds. Plus, it's backed by PayPal, so you know it's secure and reliable. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. So get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash Howie. That's joinhoney.com slash Howie. It's time for quarantine questions. You're up, Jared. What have you been eating the most during this quarantine? I've been eating a lot of Indian food because that's all that's in the machine downstairs, and I'm really grown to like it. What is your drink of choice during the lockdown? Uh, my drink of choice, I'm definitely a scotch guy. A nice doers really does it for me. What about a non-alcoholic drink? Coffee. What one TV show would you recommend to people who are quarantining right now? One show? Star Trek The Next Generation. You can't go wrong. It's got everything you want. It's got high concept science fiction. It's got humanity. It's got great characters. It's the last truly great television show. What is the biggest pet peeve about being at home? I can see all the dirt that I don't clean, and it mocks me. What is the biggest silver lining of staying at home? I'd say wearing sweatpants, but I do that most of the time anyway. I'll say wearing my Spider-Man costume and not being judged. What's one book you're loving right now? I'm a big comic book guy, so I'm reading a lot of comic books. Right now, I'm going back over the classic Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, Amazing Spider-Man run, about the first 40 issues. This is Mark in Williston, Vermont. This is Marie in Somerville, Massachusetts. This is Mike from South Attleboro, Mass. And this is the Howie Ka Show. The European virus infected the Northeast while the White House was still fixated on China. The virus had been attacking us for months before they even knew it was here. We saw the failure of a government that weakened it. Boy, this is, this is the textbook definition of gaslighting just lying he or not him but de blasio his buddy was telling people to go down to chinatown for the new years just like pelosi was saying go to chinatown in san francisco for the new years i think de blasio was telling him to go on to the subways use the subways go out to see a show now they're running. They're starting to run these stories that uh, oh, the public transit is is trying to lure riders back. How are they going to do that? You know, all, all the all the people, the white collar people, have been told they can quote unquote telecommute. They're not going back. They're not even in the city anymore. And then the people who actually like the the blue collar types that uh, go down and run the restaurants and uh, clean the buildings and uh, they're, they're the doormen and all that, they're all laid off. All these restaurants are gone. All these buildings are empty. They, how are they going to get these people to come back to New York City? I don't think they are. Meanwhile, uh, breaking news in uh, Massachusetts, no fans allowed at Gillette Stadium through September. That's the past. <laughs> And at Fenway Park through the end of the season, well, the Red Sox finally got a break. <laughs> no fans are going to be allowed in to see this slaughter that is going on this year. We're back to the days of the early 60s, you know, where there were a thousand people would show up at Fenway Park. And I was one of them. And see Dr. Strangeglove pay, playing first base for the uh, Red Sox, Dick Stewart. And it was fun. I mean, it's fun in a deserted stadium sometimes. I don't know how much fun it would be with this, what's going on now. Randy, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Randy. You Hello. there, Randy? Yeah. I, yeah, I live in uh, Indian River County, Florida. Yeah. I signed up to vote, and then they sent me a letter 
saying I can't vote because I didn't put affiliation down to put Democrat or Republican. Yeah. I, but I, I didn't want to put Republican because I want my address out. I, I know. Randy, I made the same mistake. I just re-registered in Florida from Massachusetts, and I registered independent uh, because I thought that it was like Massachusetts that I could vote in either primary. And then I found out the same thing. You you and I, Randy, just got to pay more attention to the election laws. That's all it is. You know, just uh, go and register, re-register as a Republican or a Democrat. Indian River, I guess you'd be more likely to register as a Republican. And uh, that's that's just that's just the way the law is in uh, in that state. You can still vote on the uh, in the general election on November third. Thanks for the call, Randy. Jeff, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Jeff. Actually, I was uh, I was in the city yesterday. It took like a two uh, two mile walk, and I didn't see one cab. So that's an example of people. Well, there yeah, there's another group. You, you know, you don't think about these these groups that are out of business. People that work on on conventions. Uh, cab drivers. How about all those cabbies that spent like a hundred, two hundred thousand bucks to buy a medallion right. a few years back? Jeff? A million dollars. A million dollars. A million dollars. But the re- the reason I wanted a call was um, a, f- a month ago, Trump, uh, President Trump, put in the executive order to put a ten year minimum sentence on if you pull down a statue. Yes. What about a two f- or five year minimum sentence if you touch a cop? or stop a cop from doing anything, because that's part of the problems that the cops have now, is that when they t- they have to fight with people, right. and then the people will let go. So- right. I mean, in, in, in Portland, Oregon, the DA announced he's not, gonna, he's not going to prosecute anybody for interfering with a cop or riot. Riot. That's, that's kind of serious, in, in my opinion. I'm Howie Carr. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours, too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever, is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. If Mr. Gunner was a person... What college would she attend? The U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Is Mr. Gooner a conservative or a Democrat? Mr. Gooner is a fiscal conservative and a social liberal. If you could have dinner with any president, dead or alive, who would it be? Calvin Coolidge. He was from Massachusetts, and I liked his attitude towards public sector unions, and he said the business of America is business. He's my guy. Other than yourself, which columnist do you respect the most? The late George Frazier, he was a columnist for the Boston Herald, the Boston Globe. Most people have forgotten him now. Jimmy Cannon was pretty good. He was so good that Mike Barnacle used to steal stuff from him all the time. Breslin was good in his early days. Not so good later on, but uh, when he was working for the Herald Tribune back when I was a kid, kid in in new york he was damn good the moon bats always say donald trump isn't very bright but what about barack hussein obama let's listen to some of his greatest hits Uh, i've now been in 57 states i think one left to go i don't know what the term is in austrian the cambridge police acted stupidly and there has never been any man or woman more qualified for this office There are neighborhoods around the country where it is easier for a 12 or 13 year old to purchase a gun and cheaper than it is for them to get a book. I believe in the Second Amendment. It's there written on the paper. If we if we fall for, you know, a bunch of okie doke. A few months ago when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia, not Al Qaeda. You said Russia. In the 1980s, are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back. You're listening. 
listening to the Howie Car Show. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever, is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Out of all of your books, which is your favorite title and why? I think my favorite title is Hitman because it's very effective. I thought it long and hard about it. We're going to make it Boston Hitman, but then why make it Boston Hitman? Just make it Hitman. Make it a universal subject. If you could have dinner with one author, dead or alive, who would it be? I would probably have dinner with William Shakespeare. I know that's a cliche response, but he was the greatest writer in the English language, no question about it. If you won Mega Millions, would you retire completely? I used to say no, I would not retire, but yeah, I think I would retire now. If you had to leave all of your money to one charity, which would it be? The Salvation Army. I like what the Salvation Army does. I don't think they have too many highly paid executives trying to be social justice warriors. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate. Howie Carr. If you could go back in time and give your younger self advice, what would you say? Get a state job because behind the job comes the pension. What's the best advice anyone's ever given you? Most advice is pretty forgettable. What's the best money you've ever spent? The investment I made to leave the corporate radio prison I was in. The worst people I ever worked for, no doubt about it. I'd probably be dead if I were still working for them. If you were on a deserted island and you could only bring three things, what would you bring? A radio, a Wi-Fi system, obviously, and a computer, and I would bring some books. Don't ask me which books, too hard a question. What was your dad's job when you were growing up? My dad uh, worked as a resort hotel manager. He worked in Florida at the break in the winter and then he worked at the Mountain View House as it was called then in Whitefield, New Hampshire and various other places. You're listening to the Howie Carr Show. We all love President Trump's off-the-cuff comments but he's never in rarer form than when he's speaking at a rally. Take a listen. I hit Pocahontas way too early. I thought she was gone. She's emerged from the ashes. And now it looks like she could beat Sleepy Joe. He's fallen asleep. He has no idea what the hell he's doing or saying. I don't know. I'm not a vain person. But I look better under an incandescent light than these crazy lights that are beaming down on. That guy's got a serious weight problem. Go home, start exercising. Got a bigger problem than I do. Now he goes home and his mom says, what the hell have you just done? How do you top that? I'm just ready. The big, beautiful crescendo in this character is going back home. One person just going home to mommy a little bit sooner. Ah, these are phony people, but that's okay. You know, when you think of it, I'm president and they're not. You really have to elect me. Whether you like me or not, it makes no difference because our country will go to hell if any of these people get in. With all the uncertainty in the world, feeling safe at home has never been more important. It's why I want to talk to you about Simply Safe Home Security. They're longtime friends of the Howie Car Show, and for good reason. Simply Safe has made it easy to finally get comprehensive protection for your home. There's no technician or salesperson that needs to come and disrupt your house. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two year contract. You just order online. Set it up yourself in under an hour, and your home is protected 24-7 with emergency dispatch for break-ins, fire, and more. All for just 50 cents a day. And we're not the only fans of Simply Safe. U.S. News and World Report named Simply Safe best overall home security of 2020. Go to simplysafehowie.com to try it out for yourself. 
That's simplysafehighway.com to make sure they know that our show sent you. That's simplysafehighway.com. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Who was your favorite actor? Humphrey Bogart, no doubt about it. I love all the old Humphrey Bogart movies. Jimmy Cagney would be a close second. Do you have a celebrity crush? No celebrity crushes. Ginger or Marianne? I always was a Marianne person. Never was bowled over by that Hollywood look. Plus, uh, Ginger was in more revealing attire. Scantily clad. Salty or sweet? Neither, but if I have to pick, I'll go with sweet. Movies or TV? TV. McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. Although I'd prefer Five Guys. Facebook or Twitter? Definitely Twitter. I... Better strap yourself in. It's time for the Howie Carr Show. We will get a heavy dose of hatred and rage and cult-like madness, psychosis, hysteria against all things Donald Trump. My dad was a healthy 65-year-old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump. And for that, he paid with his life. Don't you think you're laying it on a bit thick? Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. He is clearly in over his head. It is what it is. Yeah, no, she was over her head. And frankly, she should have made the speech live, which she didn't do. She taped it. And, you know, she gets these fawning reviews. I mean, this extraordinary speech. I mean, she's beautiful. Ah. I mean, it was so beautiful. And, you know, she wasn't just putting the president down. She was trying to pick the country up. Ah. Who's your captain? Howie Carr. I'm a lifelong Republican. Well, you say that. But that attachment holds second place to my responsibility to my country. That's why I've chosen to appear at this convention. Sure, that's the reason. We closed a couple of DCR pools in Lawrence over the weekend. We've done a bunch of things with uh, local communities around mask ambassador programs, around um, sort of enhanced presence on local beaches. Can't stop Charlie Parker! Unchained and unstoppable. I have legislated on racial justice. I have stood with civil rights heroes like the late John Lewis, like Dolores Huerta, like Martin Luther King III. Hey, Joe, you gonna denounce the bigot behind you? She called me on On All right? And you're standing there celebrating her. Oh, this is awkward. Rump swabs, hacks, and moon bats beware. It's Howie Carr. 844-500-4242. That is the toll-free number of the Howie Carr Show. If you'd like to join us here this afternoon, every weekday afternoon, you know, Muchel Obama talking about being over her head. Where, where did she record that? Did she record that down on the vineyard? When it, when is that, uh, their, their beachfront property going to be washed away in the uh, rising tide of global warming? You know, her husband said he was going to uh, reduce the uh, rising of the sea levels, but then Donald Trump came in and been a disaster, right? We got out of the Paris Accord, the so-called climate accord, and everything's been downhill since then. Just ask Al Gore or Greta Thunberg for that matter. So, I mean, I wonder, I wonder how many years they've got left on Nantucket before they're all washed away like a polar bear on an ice floe. All right. Uh, 844 500 42 42 that is the toll free number of the Howie Car show time now for the chump line Howie John Kasich here if you look closely at the picture you'll see I'm standing at the fork in the road I'm waiting for the knife and spoon and my free dinner plate from the DMC to be delivered <laughs> I didn't see the whole thing. It just looked like it was a field behind him to me. I, I don't know. You know, one thing about Bernie, despite being a hippie and all that and 80 years old, at least he put on a tie and, and wore a sport coat when he made his 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 uh, statement. I mean, could Kasich at least have put on a, a, a shirt that was dry cleaned and pressed? 
Was was that asking too much? This is his last. Uh, this is his last fifteen minutes of fame. I would say he's not getting anything more. He's not. He's not going back on the Fox News Channel. He, his show bombed out. You know, many years ago at this point. He's the son of a mailman. He's just an average Joe, Howie. Come on. Yeah, I know. There's too many. I'm tired of these average Joes. Loving. Tonight will feature the greatest speaker of the convention. Me. What introduction music shall I choose? I was thinking something like Leonard Zeppelin or Cosby, Stills, and Mash. Then again, there's always James Taylor. I thought, Mr. Secretary, that you were fascinated by rap. How soon they forget. Now, is is John Kerry, did he go over to the studio? Because he's on on uh, Martha's Vineyard now, too. They downsized from Nantucket. So I wonder if they've got a, uh, a beautiful people studio for these uh, convention appearances. Muchel, John Kerry, God only knows who else. I don't think Alan Dershowitz is going to be making a speech from the convention. He may be down on uh, Martha's Vineyard, but he's not going to be making a uh, an address. Can I get out of here, please? Oh, shut up. The Chump Line is brought to you by Matthews Brothers, America's oldest window manufacturer. This week, loving the Democrat National Convention and all the uplifting, positive, and patriotic speeches. All the well-timed one-liners, and perhaps for the first time since FDR gave his fireside chats on television, the first pre-recorded acceptance speech. This will truly be an historic election. Hey, Howie, Joe Biden is a man for our times. That is if our time's up. (laughs) You're right. His time is definitely up. Hey, Howie. Governor Patrick calling. Wow, this Democrat convention is a snooze fest. It's even more boring than your 60th Deerfield reunion. (laughs) You geezer. We're going to be fine. 60th? How dare you? How dare you? I missed my 50th last year. Uh, uh, yes, I believe that the Democrat convention got off with a big bang last night. I think it went very swimmingly. Uh, but, you know, uh, only time will tell. And, uh, well, it is what it is. And when Mary Jo told him that she might have a problem, he said, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's an old, that's an old joke, but it seemed appropriate for the occasion since the caller was dropping in all the other Ted Kennedy uh, bon mots. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want no bleeping part of it. <laughs> the new New York. If you can wake up with the homeless in your street, you know. The mayor and the gov don't give a freaking (laughs) bleep. No, they don't. No, they don't. The New York Post ran an editorial yesterday begging somebody serious to run for mayor. Seriously, New York Post, why would somebody serious want that job? Hey, Antifa. Remember to vote for Joe Biden on November 3rd, because he's just like you. He lives in his basement, too. (laughs) That's very good. I think that may be the uh, chump line message of the day right there. To Governor Charlie Parker, statistics get darker and darker. I'm sure you'll agree that it's plain to see he's a modern-day carnival barker. Oh, he is. But if he was if he was a carnival barker, he'd never get anybody in there to see the bearded lady, or the monkey boy, or whatever they uh, whatever else they were trying to promote. They there were six deaths today. There were four deaths yesterday, and I looked it up on the chart. Four deaths, and then I'm adding it up. And the nursing home deaths on a day when the death rate was where four deaths added to the total. Do you know what the nursing homes went up? Deaths five. So these numbers are totally on the level, you know? They're not, uh, you could trust these numbers. They're not like the others. I can't let the man continue with fuzzy math. It's, <laughs> it is. Every, first, they disappear the charts, the only chart that actually means anything, which is death rates by age. And, uh, and now they're just, they're just throwing these numbers up against the wall. 
if there's anybody on the American political scene who should know what it looks like when a president is in over his head, I would say it's Michelle Obama. <laughs> it is what it is. Who wrote that? Did they have to pay somebody to write that, to write that kind of uh, tripe? You know, Howie, I haven't been able to sleep for the past couple of days, and then I turned on the virtual Democratic convention, and I went right out. I think I would have been right out on the porch and then jumped off. If the Democratic convention was a movie, they'd call it Weekend at Biden. <laughs> if the Democrat convention was a movie it would go straight to video oh wait it already has that was your last chump line message thank you for calling howie Carr. you chump okay that's it for the chump line the chump line is the recorded voicemail message system of the howie Carr show you can call and leave a message at any hour of the day or night well actually from one to five every afternoon now i've got to change my spiel here uh, but you can leave a message anytime between 1 and 5 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we may or may not play your message at this time each weekday. Uh, press 2, call 844-500-4242 and press 2 for the chump line. And uh, if you can't get enough of the chump line, you can go to Chopped Chumps. That's our podcast. All the messages that didn't make it that ended up on the cutting room floor, you can hear them at 7 o'clock tonight. Chopped Chumps, wherever you get your other how we car podcasts. The chump line is brought to you by Matthews brothers, America's oldest window manufacturer this week, loving the Democrat national convention and all the uplifting, positive and patriotic speeches, all the well-rehearsed one-liners and perhaps for the first time since FDR gave his fireside chats on television, probably on the Dumont network, the first pre-recorded acceptance speech. This will truly be an historic election. Hey, Antifa, remember to vote for Joe Biden on November 3rd, because he's just like you. He lives in his basement, too. <laughs> I'm Howie Carr. You're tuned into the Howie Carr Radio Network. There are many conversations at both the state and federal levels about gun control. People for and against background checks, waiting periods, and what you should and should not be allowed to purchase. Regardless of what happens, you have the right to bear arms. It's your constitutional right. And you also have the obligation to yourself, your family, and those around you to lock up your guns. Liberty Safe New Hampshire can help you pick the right safe for you. Visit LibertySafeNewHampshire.com. Be smart. Be responsible. Be safe. Liberty Safe. AmeriClean Sanitizing is providing state-of-the-art sanitation for your home or business. Using the HaloCell fogging system, it is able to kill 428 different viruses, including COVID. Hospitals have been using the HaloCell fogging system for years, and now you can too. The fog sanitizes everything, including keyboards, under the desk, and even HVAC systems. To schedule an appointment or learn more, go to AmeriCleanSanitizing.com. Take a look at their videos at AmeriCleanSanitizing.com and see how easy it is to kill the virus. Joe Biden accuses Trump of being a racist, but if you listen to Biden's comments, you would agree that he doth protest too much. If you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not, what do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? He's the first mainstream African American who is articulate and bright and, and clean. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. That kid wearing a hoodie may very well be the next poet laureate. And not a gangbanger. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. God love you. You've been here all day. My Lord, you may feel like you're being incarcerated. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. I think the two-party system is good for the South and good for the Negro. They're going to put you all back in chains. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black.
You've been hearing me talk about Super Beats for a while now, and I'm sure some of you are still thinking, why Super Beats? You could take it from me. The benefits of Super Beats are incredible. I take them twice a day, once in the morning when I get up, even before I have my first cup of coffee, and the other time in the afternoon, right before the show. It gives me a burst of energy. It's great for my blood pressure. It's good for circulation. It just makes you feel better. If that doesn't convince you, we can talk about the science behind Super Beats. Beats have nitrates. Nitrates support better blood flow, and better blood flow equals better energy and efficiency throughout the body and even supports healthy blood pressure. But Super Beets does so much more than eating regular beets and is unparalleled compared to other beet powders. Just one scoop of Super Beets has the nitric oxide equivalent of three whole beets. Go to superbeetsradio.com slash Howie and try out Super Beets yourself. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. If you could go back in time and give your younger self advice, what would you say? Get a state job, because behind the job comes the pension. What's the best advice anyone's ever given you? Most advice is pretty forgettable. What's the best money you've ever spent? The investment I made to leave the corporate radio prison I was in. The worst people I ever worked for, no doubt about it. I'd probably be dead if I were still working for them. If you were on a deserted island and you could only bring three things, what would you bring? A radio, a Wi-Fi system, obviously, and a computer. And I would bring some books. Don't ask me which books. Too hard a question. What was your dad's job when you were growing up? My dad uh, worked as a resort hotel manager. He worked in Florida at the Breakers in the winter, and then he worked at the Mountain View House, as it was called then, in Whitefield, New Hampshire, and various other places. in Woodstock, Connecticut. This is Laura Benner in South Burlington, Vermont. This is Jimmy Mack in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And this is The Howie Ka Show. Eight four four five hundred forty two forty two. 500 That's the toll-free number if you want to call in to the show. Today's poll question is sponsored by our friends at massfiscal.org. Mass Fiscal has led the charge against tax increases, most recently opposing the governor's horrible TCI gas tax, Transportation Climate Initiative, that doubles the gas tax. It's been approved by the legislature. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't, you know, uh, it he hasn't imposed it yet, but it's only a matter of time. What happens if in the next day or two we go down to number two in the, un- and in the unemployment numbers, if Hawaii or Nevada sh- slides ahead of us? We'll have to have this new gas tax in, right? That's what he'll say. He wants to. He he he. It's it's a measure of his success. Third highest death rate, worst unemployment rate. Anyway, if you want to know what's going on, what the latest outrages he's got planned and the legislature's got planned, sign up for free today at massfiscal.org. Now, massfiscal.org. Jared, what's the poll question? What are the results thus far? If you had to choose. Which one of these DNC speakers would you hang out with for the night? Senator Bernie Sanders, John Kasich, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, John Forbes Kerry, Senator Chuck Schumer, or Governor Gavin Newsom? I'm going to stick with Kerry, it's, but it's a terrible choice. It's only polling at 9% for John Forbes Kerry. At 34%, though, the audience is still feeling the burn for Bernie Sanders. Coming in second, we have Gavin Newsom at 22%. John Kasich is at 18 Nancy Pelosi at 10 You know, is, people out there who are voting for Bernie, they're just remembering when he announced and Ben and Jerry's brought all the free ice cream <laughs> to Burlington. He's not announcing anymore. He's, he's, uh, he's run the grift. You know, he's, uh, he's retired now. He, 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 he ran the successful political Ponzi scheme, made millions of dollars. He has three, three houses or DACA's, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, he's, he's out of it now. He's out of it. So I don't know. I wouldn't, uh, I, I ran into him once when he was just elected mayor and it was not, it was not a pleasant experience. He just is not, he's not a likable guy. 
he's not a he's not a hail fellow well met. You know what I mean? And that maybe because he was so nervous because he was like probably 45 years old then and it was going to be the first time he'd ever had to go to work in the morning even if it was just a political elective job at city hall. All right. Uh 844-500-4242, that is the uh, toll-free number of the Howie Car Show. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the fact that so many people are scared of, uh, of COVID-19 even now. It just, it, it really amazes me, it, and not just, not just the governors of our states, or many of our states, but just the average person. I, I see people, you know, younger people especially, who are in no danger whatsoever when you get right down to it unless they have an underlying condition and i i see them walking around without masks and in some cases they're angry and they they look like they're po'd as as i am and uh on up on the other hand though some of them actually look frightened and i see them walking around in a mask and i think to myself what else would these people believe if you told them something something this crazy i mean don't they ever like do any research don't they, do they ever ask themselves, why am I wearing this mask when I don't know anyone who's gotten sick, let alone died? So there was a, there's a new, there's been a couple of polls that have come out about how much people are uh, overestimating, how many people are actually dead. And this is from the spectator. Uh, Rush was talking about one of these polls today and Fox had somebody on. I don't know if I, I don't know if I have the right story. It's hard to find these stories because again, the, the, so, social media, uh, high, big tech doesn't want you to understand that this is not a problem because it's a way to get rid of Donald Trump. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It's the, uh, it's the election year flu. That's what, the, that's what it rea- in reality, it's not, the, it's not the Asian flu or the European flu. It's the election year flu. It's Democrat flu. It's blue flu. I mean, blue Democrat, not blue cops, blue Democrats. This is from the Spectator in in the UK. Astonishingly, in this poll, it's a new poll. Americans believe that COVID has killed nine percent of their countrymen, or almost thirty million people. Thirty million people. We got some people, some VIPs from Maine. I think your governor may believe that, Janet Mills, and and I think uh, Governor Scott in uh, in Vermont may believe it too. I think between Vermont and Maine, there's about two hundred people dead. And the, the, both states are still locked down as much as Massachusetts, which is, it, which is a ridiculous overreaction. But still, there's the third highest death rate in the country. Maine and Vermont don't have any deaths. The, uh, the real U.S. total has crossed the milestone of 150,000. But for pity's sake, only 20 million people died in World War I. So in other words, Americans believe that 30 million, that more, that a one and a half times more people have died in the U S in the last six months than died in world war one, where they had trench warfare for four years. Part of the answer is media hype. Obviously this is a uh, John Heineracker at the Powerline blog daily press briefings by government officials trying to assure the public that they are doing something scare headlines in which case numbers are trumpeted and so on obviously have inflated the virus's image still it's hard to believe how anyone could believe that nine percent of all americans 30 million have died from COVID. if that were true then all of us would know any number of people who have not just caught COVID but died from it i personally do not know a single person who has even caught the bug I, I used to work with somebody at the Herald who died, but I hadn't seen him in 35 years, and he had cancer. We'll, we'll take some calls on this. Do you know people that are overreacting to this? Obviously you do. I'm Howie Carr. Nauset Beach Inn, the only lodging in the Cape Cod National Seashore, has started their fall special. For only $1.99 a night in October, you can have an ocean view room with two queen beds. Nauset Beach Inn is pet friendly for an additional charge. Social separation is simple. Every room opens to their four acre lawn with easy self check in and out. Reserve your room today and see the beautiful Cape Cod National Seashore before the rooms are all gone. Still a few rooms left in September as well. Reserve now at NaussetBeachInn.com. 
The stressful summer of 2020 is winding down, but now is the perfect time to take off for some fun in beautiful Nantucket. Southern Airways fast flights from Norwood, Providence, Hyannis, and now New Bedford will get you to Nantucket without traffic jams, crowded ferry rides, or the need to quarantine. I fly Southern, and let me tell you, it is a first-class and hassle-free way to fly. So take off to Nantucket from friendly Norwood, Providence, Hyannis, or New Bedford airports. Book today at iFlySouthern.com or call 800-329-0485. He might not be flashy, but he's there when it counts. Here's one minute of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. For the first time in my memory, I agree with Nancy Pelosi. I am indeed the Grim Reaper when it comes to the socialist agenda that they've been ginning up over in the House. You've watched the fight. You've watched the tactics. But here's what I want to tell you. In the very near future... Judge Kavanaugh will be on the United States Supreme Court. Noted with great interest the Green New Deal. And we're going to be voting on that in the Senate. We'll give everybody an opportunity to go on record and uh, see how they feel about the Green New Deal. Well, first on the impartiality issue, do you think Chuck Schumer is impartial? Do you think Elizabeth Warren is impartial? No. Bernie Sanders is impartial? So let's quit the charade. This is a political exercise. Nobody is supposed to be guilty until proven innocent in the United States of America. Look, we're at an impasse. We can't do anything until the speaker sends the papers over. So everybody enjoy the holidays. Now's the perfect time to get a pair of premium wireless earbuds, and Raycon is the way to go. Raycon started about half the price of other premium brands on the market, and they sound just as amazing. And Raycon's everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. You get six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Perfect for conference calls, video chats, or binging podcasts. Raycon was founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Cardi B and J.R. Smith have already given Raycons their seal of approval. I love my Raycons, and Grace loves hers, too. Howie, I love my Raycons. Best birthday gift ever. I listen to much better music than she does, though. Hey, that's not true. Now it's your turn to see what the hype is all about. Go to buyraycon.com slash Howie. That's buyraycon.com slash Howie. Buyraycon.com slash Howie. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Would you say you're more like your mom or your dad? No, I don't think I ended up being like either of them now that I think about it. My mother worked hard, but she she never uh, really learned how to make a lot of money. And my father didn't work so hard, but he had a, a good personality. He was good with people. He was better than me with people. That's what I'm saying. I'm not like either one of them, I don't think. Did you have any siblings? Yes, I have a brother, a younger brother. What was your favorite subject in school? Well, all kinds of history. I loved all kinds of history. If you could have three houses, besides the ones you already have, anywhere in the world, where would they be? I wouldn't mind uh, having another house in Palm Beach on Clark Avenue. Maybe a place in uh, southern Maine. I don't need a third place. Didn't you already have a house in Maine? I did. I did. It was on an island. It was not a good fit for the mailroom manager. I've heard the house was haunted. Is that true? Yes. uh, My wife didn't really care that much for my relatives. Here's one minute of President Eric Swalwell. Chris, so far, the evidence is uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. But I will always be real with you. I will be bold without the bold. Welcome to my fellow candidates, whom I consider we are all a part of being the Avengers. The Republicans in 2016, that was the Hunger Games. And, you know, it's, it's said often that history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes, uh, and, and we heard a lot of rhymes yesterday. My wife, Brittany, also wants you to know we've got two beautiful children, Nelson and Cricket, but the decision to have children was her choice. I'm the only candidate calling for a ban and buyback on every single assault weapon. Again, we have to have an ankle monitor on this president. This is the worst possible time for a serial offender like him to be running around unsupervised. Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. 844 Let me just finish this. Uh, John Hinderack, I think about this poll showing that the, the, I don't know if the average American or or how to describe it, but uh, Americans in a poll said that 
I guess on average, that 30 million people had died. 30 million people. It's uh, 9% of the population dead. You don't know any of them, but 9% of the population is gone. Yikes. Of course, the, the Democrat nominee for president thinks 120 million people have died. So I guess he, he inflates it a little bit, right? He thinks, and he also thinks 150 million people have been killed by guns since uh, Bernie Sanders voted against the, uh, fire, the firearm, uh, a firearms bill in the Senate in 2007. Uh, so uh, throughout human history, people's opinions have been based mostly on their own observations and experience. If someone tried to sell you a line of BS, a normal person would check that claim against his own experience, and if it didn't add up, reject the claim. This was known as common sense. Somehow, that basic reality check seems to have stopped operating. That's so true. It's, it, the, the basic reality check in a number of ways has stopped operating. People think we can go on like this with you know the economy basically shut down and, and huge numbers of people not working and government printing presses just grinding out uh, money and nothing's going to happen. Many millions of Americans apparently believe that their compatriots are dropping like flies from COVID when their own experience, if consulted, would belie that assertion. But in our world, media hype, the assurance of quote-unquote experts and social media groupthink seems to trump lived experience. That is common sense. If most people begin to form opinions that are actually contrary to their own experience and observations based instead on media hysteria, that is likely politically driven. The Democrat process, democratic process can go seriously awry. That is where we are today. Examples of this phenomenon could be multiplied. Claims about racial injustice are another obvious example. But for now, let's stick with COVID. If most Americans seriously believe that COVID fatalities are 188 times the actual number, they likely will vote for policies that are, to put it politely, suboptimal. That's, that's, that's so true. So today there were six new deaths in Massachusetts, four in nursing homes. So at least it added up, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, any, any death is unfortunate, but six is not a large number. That's 10 in the last two days. Yet the state remains basically under martial law, totally locked down. And we'll play some Charlie Parker cuts where he's basically tightening the screws even further. 844-500-4242-603. Don't know anyone who's had COVID, but I've seen a lot of tweakers who enjoy telling everyone to wear a mask. Oh, is that ever true? Karens have been proliferating like rabbits. Everybody, Everybody feels the need to tell everybody else. And the thing is, too, that all the Karens claim that they're victims, too. That's the thing. We have uh, Charlie Parker talking about how, you know, he hasn't seen but 10 people since, uh, since March. Did it ever occur to him that maybe he hasn't seen 10 people because nobody wants to talk to him? I mean, after you watch, after you watch one of his press conferences, you, you think the Democrat National Convention is painful? I, I, I knew Grace would come in to, to chime in on this one, Grace. Grace, you're, you're familiar with uh, what what watching Charlie Parker is like for an hour every couple of days. Yeah, but I was just going to say on the Karen thing, I was in the Cape a few weekends ago, and my sister and I were going to get breakfast sandwiches and some coffees, and she looked at me and she said, it's just so annoying because everyone gives you looks if you do anything wrong with your mask, like it's, if it's beneath your nose, if it's not whatever. And she said, she said to me, if it bothers them so much, if they're that worried, maybe don't go out into the main street of Chatham in the middle of the summer and walk around all the stores. Pick one or the other. Don't yeah. do both. I'm not scared, so I'm out here. But I don't need people staring. I don't like when people stare. Yeah. Mind your own beeswax. No, I, I was out in Chatham a few weeks before you, Grace, and, and I'm not scared, but I don't like being stared at. So I haven't been back since. So then I went to a restaurant the other day and the, I was talking to the bartender and I said, this whole thing's so stupid, whatever. And he was really nice. And he said, I know. And he said, you wouldn't mind. So there's probably five people working behind the bar and everyone else can take their masks off once they sit down. 
And he said, if I take my mask, he's there for like 10 hours. If he takes his mask and puts it a little bit beneath his nose to breathe, a customer, a Karen, will come over and say, excuse me, you're supposed to have that over your nose. He goes, do these people realize that there's probably 200 people in this building and there's 10 of us with masks on? It doesn't make any sense. I know. Do, do they ever look at these numbers? I mean, not even the not even the local TV stations can inflate these numbers into a panic situation anymore. And and yet the governor is out there every day trying to scare the bleep out of people and threatening people. John, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, John. Hey, how you doing, Howie? Good. Good. Hey, I'm up here in Maine. I live up in central Maine, but I work out of southern Maine, York County, Cumberland County all the time. Yeah. Uh, I deal with guys, I haul oil and gasoline. I deal with guys from New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Maine. Nobody yet knows anybody that's died from this or been sick. Uh, I call it just a great hoax. I mean, you know, we've had more people up here die of drug overdoses this year by twice as many. I, I know. And nobody I, wants to talk about that. I, I know. I think it's the same thing in Vermont, and it probably is the same. Th- I mean, there's a few more in New Hampshire that are dead, but I, I'll bet there's more people dead of fentanyl overdoses uh, than there are of uh, of COVID. And, and, you know, they and, and people like Janet Mills and Charlie Parker, they don't say boo about the fact that all these drugs are being sold by illegal aliens, which what LePage used to say it, the Boston Police Department says it. And it's true, isn't it? But why why isn't there a concern about the you know doing something about the uh, the the plague of uh, fentanyl overdoses that's caused by illegal aliens? That's all they talked about last year and the year before, and it's like it's gone away. Yeah, it's gone nowhere. You know, no. it's gone absolutely nowhere. But this is the hoax of the of the time. That's all it amounts to. Yeah, I, I know. You know there are people. There are some people that are dying, but but again, I mean, most of them had underlying conditions. And the, the other thing about changing this, uh, this, this uh, daily chart in Massachusetts is, I've been wondering about this for a long time because I, I saw the numbers of the people over 80 kept increasing and increasing, but they never changed. They never changed. They always said average age, 82. And finally, last week, it just popped, 86. It went Overnight, it went from 82 to 86. How, how is that possible? And And... And I, I asked this question of the uh, of the Department of Public Health. I said, "Which which is right? Which is which number is correct? Eighty two or eighty six? No answer. No answer. It's just I, I don't I don't know if you can call it a hoax, but it's it's certainly an I mean it's it's hyped. It's total hype, though. You know, this is no different than a lot of other flus that we've had in the past. Thanks for the call, John. Clark, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Clark. No, it's Bob. Oh, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Go ahead. That's all right, Howie. I just got out of Mass General yesterday, and, you know, they, they got the best nurses in the world, and I trust nurses. Yes. So I, I went in there. I just had a bleed, but about halfway through, I got a roommate, and he had been up on the isolation uh, floor where they got the COVID patients, and he says, they take it really serious up there. You know how they all wear balloon suits all around, you know, on their bodies and everything. They're all covered up, and they had him completely separated. So they take it very seriously up there. But when when you get down to the lower wards, you wear the little mask and, and you you wash your you keep your hands clean. They keep their, they keep sanitizing. So the nurse says to me, "Look, now I got mild risk factors. Uh, I'm type A blood. Uh, I got a little bit of asthma. I'm 70 years old." And I've been handling it this way all along. I haven't been super worried about it. I'll be honest with you. I haven't. Because I figure, hey, I'm 70 years old. Just be a little bit careful. Right. So I, I wear the mask. If I'm, if I'm around people, I wear the mask. And I do keep my hands clean. If I come in or out, I touch anything. They said for the average person, this thing is no worse than the flu. That's right. what one of them told me. And I trust these girls. Um. For the people, but see, they, you know, Clark, it. Bob. Here's the thing: they must trust you because I don't think they would. I don't think they would come out and say that publicly, or they they would be uh, they would be attacked. They would be harangued uh, by their superiors, wouldn't they? Probably, yeah. They said the average person; it's nothing more than the flu. That's about it. Yeah. And the few people who do get sick, 
They can get very sick, and there's no magic bullet. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to keep going out. I went out yesterday to walk my dog. I love my dog just like you love Guna. I love Guna. So Thanks. anyways, they said, I, I go out without it. I saw him Thursday, that Thursday, and I fell in love with him. Um, I went out for a walk yesterday. I forgot my mask. I didn't turn around and go home. Right. I just walked the other side of the street. I saw somebody coming, and I went back to the side of the street. I, I I really think this is overblown. I don't think these things should be shut down. Maybe some restrictions on restaurants. Other than that, everything should be running. I I agree. I agree. And 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 you know, and Baker is already uh, here in Massachusetts is already making a big deal. We don't know what's going to happen in the fall. Well, I think we know what's going to happen in the fall. Uh, if but if Biden wins, I think it goes away. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for Biden. But I, I think this is. I, th- I think that's the only reason it's still continuing now is they just think it's going to hamstring uh, Trump. I mean, they don't. What what else do they have? I mean, they're they're blaming uh, Trump for the for the economy, but it's basically the Democrat governors that have crashed the economy that won't let people go back to work, and uh, and, and won't uh, won't send the kids back to school, and, and they're already saying, okay, no no uh, Patriots games in September. Does anybody think that the, somehow they're going to decide uh, Charlie Parker? I mean, that dithering turd in the punch bowl is, is going to suddenly decide that that okay, you, you couldn't see him play uh, the Bills on September twenty fifth, but but on October the tenth, you can see him play the Dolphins. I don't think so. That ain't in the cards. That it, it's not going to be any games this year in uh, and. and God, I I feel sorry for I see him. I see his picture on the internet all the time. Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback from Clemson. I mean, that guy. He was going to be the first pick in the draft. He was going to get like twenty million bucks, probably. What the hell's going to happen to him now? I guess he'll still do okay, but he's not going. He's not going to get the same kind of payday that he was going to get before. It's it, talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I, everybody who was planning to go into the NFL draft. What are they going to do this year? There's not going to be any college football. Basically, they may they may say some of them are, but there's not. It's not. It's, it just ain't happening. Eight four four five hundred forty two forty two four one three says hell. I probably had uh, COVID back in March. I'm thirty one. Had a fever for two days. Was no big deal. Yeah, I got I got the I said some kind of flu like thing back in uh, March or April. But who? I mean, who knows? I, yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of the VIPs are saying they did too. And uh, yeah, I mean. It's one of those things, you know, it, it for 99.8% of the population, it's not going to kill you. Everyone knows PayPal, but did you know they're teaming up with Honey to save you money? Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. And now it's part of the PayPal family. Here's how it works. The first thing to remember is it's free. Just add Honey to your computer and shop on all your favorite sites like normal. When you check out, just click the little apply coupons button that pops up. Wait a few seconds for Honey to scan its database of all the working coupons on the web. Then watch your price drop. What I do is uh, sometimes you don't even have to hit the button. It just comes down and tells you, it's, uh, wait for uh, better deals or let us, uh, let us uh, you know, figure out something for you. Right, Grace? Yeah, some people are getting the wrong idea about me that I'm like this chronic shopper and I spend way too much money, which couldn't be further from the truth. But I will say that Pottery Barn, um, I went on there the other day and with Honey, I saved 20%. 20%? On Pottery Barn. And that's expensive stuff. Well, here's the thing, Howie, is that I just bought a house. So Honey is a a necessity for me because I I have to furnish my home. I don't have a choice. Like Carolyn. Yeah. My daughter. Yeah. So when that little coin drops down and starts dancing, I know I've saved so much money. How much did you save? Oh, that, well, that would give away how much I spent. And I, I, that. I know. That's why I asked. I can't. I'm, I played the fifth. <laughs> All right. Honey works on nearly every online store, including Walmart, DoorDash, Home Depot, Lululemon, Macy's, and more. Honey has found over $2 billion in savings. That's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. Honey is free to use and installs in just seconds. Get Honey today at joinhoney.com slash Howie. You won't regret it. You'll start saving money immediately. 
That's joinhoney.com slash Howie. I'm Howie Carr. You're listening to the Howie Carr Radio Network. Talking about erectile dysfunction isn't easy. Good thing Roman makes treating erectile dysfunction simple, safe, and from the comfort of your own home. Get a free online evaluation today at GetRoman.com slash Howie. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of erectile dysfunction treatment. Biden might be the front runner for the Democrats, but that isn't stopping him from serving up a whole lot of gaffes. Take a listen. I believe that the president is literally an existential threat to America for three reasons. One, uh, he is a genuine threat to uh, our... Uh, I had permission to hug Lonnie. You know, he says, let's make America great again. Let's make America America again. I think I'm either low IQ or slow or I don't know what I am, you know. Slow Joe Biden. The uh, thanks for the uh, Mary and uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, I'm going to be here a lot. <laughs> um, I want the press to know she pulled me close. I just want you to know. Okay? President Trump inherited an economy from Obama Biden. By the way, he gave me permission to touch him. They can't even figure out how to deal with the, 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 the fact that they have this great division between the China Sea and the mountains in the east, I mean, in the west. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours, too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever, is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. You are known as a cheap bastard. Which one of your daughters is the cheapest and why? Charlotte is the cheapest, and I say that because she's always using my credit card. We keep changing the credit cards over and over again, and she keeps uh, busting in and using them again. Most recently, just this week, she spent 75 bucks at AT&T. What's the cheapest thing you do now to save money? The cheapest thing I do currently to save money, I guess, is I take all the bottles and cans back to the market basket every weekend. I always like to save that money. You know, I can't stand to throw those bottles and cans away and have the unclaimed returns go to the state of Massachusetts for illegal aliens. Do you recycle? Yes, I do recycle. When I got on the town meeting, I saw that the town dump was probably the only department in the town that was running in the black, and it's because of all the recycling that was going on. So I try to keep my taxes down that way. This is Chris in Rochester, Mass. This is Mark in Nashville, New Hampshire. This is Lana in Truckstown, Pennsylvania. And this is The Holly Car Show. 844-500-4242. Someone says, what's your fax number? I'll send you the most important parts from that poll. Yeah, because I can't find that poll anywhere except in, uh, you know, just, you know, scattered vague references to it. So fax it uh, to us. It's 857 857- Two eight four eight eight six four eight five seven two eight four eight eight six four. 2848 uh, 609 says, I'm from New Jersey and we went up to Maine this past week. I was shocked at just how much they are overreacting up there. Oh, so you ran into Governor Mills <laughs> and, her, uh, and her health director. Employees dedicated to sanitizing carts at grocery stores. None of that in New Jersey. A lady yelled at my wife because she got in an elevator with her. Yeah, I like that stuff. Yeah, don't. Yeah, this go, don't go in elevators. I, I, I have I I've been at, at a building with elevators, and uh, that's starting to break down in my building. You know, I just said, I just said, to, I got I was there first, and I said, you can. I said to this woman, I said, you know, you can. I don't mind. You can come on the elevator. <laughs> you know, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. It's a slow elevator. You don't have to 
devote a minute of your life to waiting for the elevator to come back. She said, okay, okay. You know, every little bit helps, I guess. Uh, at 781, the scariest thing is we could possibly lose this country to socialism because there are so many ignorant people out here. Yeah. There's another one. A lot of people are uh, texting in about this. 617, at the beach all day, was worried there'd be fights over masks and distancing. Literally, no one gives a bleep. No, I know. Well, there's one guy. His name is Tall Duvall, also known as Charlie Parker. He gives a bleep. Um don't know anyone who's had the COVID, but I've seen a lot of people telling everyone to enjoy it. Uh, this doesn't pass the smell test. We're constantly bombarded by COVID stats. News agencies want to make sure we have the up to the hour death and infection rates. Yeah, I, I've, I've gotten to the point where I, I, uh, in, when I read the Wall Street Journal in the morning, they're they're trying to promote it. They couldn't even find a story to put on the front page today. But I always look to go how many paragraphs down is it before they mention the D word, deaths. Every day it's, it drifts down a few more paragraphs. There's only so they, they promote case testing. Uh, there used to be ventilators and PPE. Then it was, then last week it was kids getting more infected. This week it's uh, younger minorities getting more infected. Everybody's over it. Everybody's figured it out though. You know, it's not working anymore. Russ, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Russ. You know, Howie, let's face it, the gullible will always be sucked into a good con game, whether it's COVID-19 or man-made global warming. In both cases, it's the control freaks gone wild. And throughout history, the doomers and gloomers are strictly out to lunch. Their statistics are always a way, way off base. Unfortunately, history is our guide, Howie, and not political BS. The, the problem is, Russ, that history is written by the winners, you know, as it's been said many times. And if, uh, if they win this election, uh, they're going to, they'll be writing history for a while. We're, we're going to be uh, out of power. I mean, we've, again, every election now is Flight 93 election. We got to win every election. They just, uh, once they win one, I don't know, dot, 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 I'll leave it at that. We'll be right back. I'm Howie Carr. Matthews Brothers with one T, America's oldest window manufacturer. For over eight years, we here at Matthews Brothers have ended every stupid commercial with that simple but repetitive spelling reminder. Even so, people come up to us every day and say, Hey there, Mr. Man, were those Matthews Brothers fictional or were they real like the Marx Brothers, the Wright Brothers, or the Blues Brothers? We usually respond with, Listen here, sister. 25 years before Tom Edison invented electricity, Spencer, Noah, and Sanford Matthews started making their first wicked awesome windows in Belfast, Maine. Being the clever fellas they were, they decided to call the company company, Matthews Brothers. Over the next 166 years, the company passed from the Matthews to the Frost to the Lang and finally to the Hawthorne family, who today are in their third generation of leadership and management. This continuity has allowed us to maintain the Matthews Brothers traditions of superior quality, outstanding performance, and surprising affordability. You can learn more about our wicked awesome main made windows and doors, but only at better lumber yards and window professionals or on the web at MatthewsBrothers.com. That's Matthews Brothers with one T, America's oldest window manufacturer. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Can you remember any time in your life when you were starstruck? One time I saw Peter Vesey, the NBA columnist for the New York Post. He was in the Herald Sports Department. I really liked his column, so I went up and introduced myself to him. Then one time there was Cousin Brucey from WABC, and I used to listen to him driving back and forth between Chapel Hill and Deerfield when I was in college. Everybody on the East Coast listened to him. I couldn't believe that I was in the presence of Cousin Brucey. Do you ever play bridge anymore? No, I haven't played bridge in a very long time. Nobody I know plays bridge. I think my bridge days are behind me. Do you think you'd still be good at it? I'm not a great bidder, but I know how to count cards. That, to me, is the essence of uh, playing a hand of bridge, is to be able to count cards. What is a rhino? Rhino is a Republican in name only. Think Paul Ryan. Oh, think Mitt Romney. Think Jeff Flake. There are plenty of differences between Trump and the Democrats running for 2020. But the main one is Trump's pretty funny. Take a listen. What advice would you give to the 25 year old Donald Trump knowing what you know today? Don't run for president. I'm not a drinker. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life. Okay, it's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. Whenever they're looking for something good, I say I never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. Can you imagine if I had what a mess I'd be? Would I be the I'd be the world's worst? Other countries, big countries, India. 
and others. We had to pay because they considered them a growing country. They were a growing country. I said, what are we? Are we allowed to grow too? Okay. No, are we allowed to grow? I try like hell to hide that ball spot, folks. I work harder. Doesn't look bad. Hey, we're hanging in. I should have saved the Pocahontas thing for another year. Because I've destroyed her political career and now I won't get a chance to run against her and I would have loved it. I don't want to knock out all of the good stuff and end up with somebody that's actually got talent. That would be terrible. You're listening to The Howie Carr Show. Hair loss is not one of life's more enjoyable experiences. If you're looking to fill in your hairline or reverse years of hair loss, DiStefano Hair Restoration will create a result that will be a transformative experience. The result of my IGT procedure was quite remarkable. I now have fuller, thicker hair so I can even wear it a bit longer. There are a few major decisions I've made in my life that I wish I did sooner. My hair restoration is number one. It was by far one of the best moves I've ever made. My hair looks awesome, and the confidence from having a full head of hair again has left me feeling great. I used to look in the mirror and dreaded seeing my ever-increasing ball spot. Now, when I look in the mirror, I see the new me with a full head of thick hair. For information on how to make the same choice I did, go to hairman.com slash Howie. What are you waiting for? More hair to fall out? Get the hair you've always wanted. Hairman.com slash Howie. And now, an interview with the Emperor of Hate, Howie Carr. Who do you consider the biggest rhino in the Republican Party? Probably is Paul Ryan. I wish a Republican were still the speaker, but Paul Ryan was scarcely a Republican. And there was a reason he was Mitt Romney's running mate, because we had a rhino ticket in 2012. Where did the expression, how many more, Mr. Speaker, how many more, come from? That comes from the State House. There used to be a state rep who sometimes would talk about atrocities that were happening in crime. And he would get up there and he would say, how many more, Mr. Speaker, how many more? And I just picked it up and it became a trademark. Where is your favorite place to go out to eat in Palm Beach? My favorite place to go in Palm Beach is probably the Honor Bar, which used to be O-Bar. And you can get a really great hamburger there and they have a great coffee machine that brews each cup of coffee individually and now some of my favorite fake indian cuts of all time i'm not going to ask you for your favorite curse word actually i am do you have a favorite curse word poop poop (laughs) oh that's that's a goody two shoes uh, favorite curse word if i ever heard one are you kidding have you ever seen a woman like me look you straight in the face (laughs) after you finish some long explanation of something and then just said Hold on a sec. I'm going to get me um, a beer. I am not sure what she's talking about as far as a rally with... It was a rally in Bern, ordered uh, 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 by... uh, Is that you have to figure out who you are. I grew up in a family that was barely hanging on to the ragged edge of the middle class. And my Aunt B has walked by that picture at least a thousand times, remarked that he... that. Her father, my papa, had high cheekbones like all of the Indians do. You're listening to The Howie Carr Show. Thank you, New England, for supporting Music Drives Us. Since 2006, we have used the power of music to benefit communities throughout the six states of New England. During this time, we've proudly supported more than 200 schools and donated upwards of 1,000 instruments. And this year, we're getting ready to donate all over again. Our work is made possible through your continued support of our musical mission. Whether you donated, volunteered at our events, attended our concerts, or engaged with us on social media, thank you. We hope you'll stay tuned with what we have in store for this year because it'll be our best year yet. Visit us at musicdrivesus.org. That's musicdrivesus.org. Or follow us at Music Drives Us on social. Together, we can keep music in our schools.
We all shop online, and now you can do it a better way with Honey. Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. Just download Honey to your computer and shop on all your favorite websites like normal. When you check out, just click the Apply Coupons button that pops up. Wait a few seconds for Honey to scan its database of all the working coupons on the web. Then watch your price drop. Honey works on nearly every online store, including Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Macy's, Etsy, and more. And Honey has found over $2 billion in savings for its users. That's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome Store. It's 100% free to use and installs in seconds. Plus, it's backed by PayPal, so you know it's secure and reliable. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. So get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash Howie. That's joinhoney.com slash Howie. I've seen a lot of Anchor Cupcakes in my day. Here are some of the latest network Netwits. Danny says, if I'm elected mm-hmm. president, I will push for a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. Correct me, there already are term limits, so what does he mean? And what are we hearing in the background? Is that shelling? No, Katie, uh, uh, Katie, you're actually hearing that I from here in Jerusalem. Okay. There's actually fireworks going fireworks off right behind me. We are in our tribes, we're in our corners most of our lives. I think we just heard some gunshots. Should we listen to that for a second? Control room? Is that some- not gunshots? Okay. Ivanka is not the second lady. She is actually, I don't think she deserves this position. She's actually a senior advisor to the president. So the idea that he would demean her. Better strap yourself in. It's time for the Howie Carr Show. We will get a heavy dose of hatred and rage and cult-like madness, psychosis, hysteria against all things Donald Trump. My dad was a healthy 65-year-old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump. And for that, he paid with his life. Don't you think you're laying it on a bit thick? Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. He is clearly in over his head. It is what it is. Yeah, no, she was over her head. And frankly, she should have made the speech live, which she didn't do. She taped it. And, you know, she gets these spawning reviews. I mean, this extraordinary speech. I mean, she's beautiful. Ah. I mean, it was so beautiful. And, you know, she wasn't just putting the president down. She was trying to pick the country up. Ah. Who's your captain? Howie Carr. I'm a lifelong Republican. Well, you say that. But that attachment holds second place to my responsibility to my country. That's why I've chosen to appear at this convention. Sure, that's the reason. We closed a couple of DCR pools in Lawrence over the weekend. We've done a bunch of things with uh, local communities around mask ambassador programs, around um, sort of enhanced presence on local beaches. Can't stop Charlie Parker! Unchained and unstoppable. I have legislated on racial justice. I have stood with civil rights heroes like the late John Lewis, like Dolores Huerta, like Martin Luther King III. She called me a n- a n- all right? And you're standing there celebrating her. Oh, this is awkward. Rump swabs, hacks, and moon bats beware. It's Howie Carr. We got the VIPs in here today, uh, six VIPs, and uh, it's good. everybody having a good time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the guys from Maine, Joel, brought me a, uh, a 50... A, a model of a 58 Edsel convertible. Boy, is it beautiful. I'm holding it up for the, uh, for the YouTube cam. It's just great. Oh, that grill. I love that grill. It brings back memories of my youth. It's, uh, I, I don't know why the Edsel never cut on. And uh, Grace got some stuff, and uh, Taylor got a gift too, and, but he's not here anymore. His, uh, his, his wife is uh, giving birth uh, momentarily. Or I, we'll let you know when it happens. And uh, so he'll be out for the next couple of weeks. Anyway, uh, we, we played a cut earlier in the day from, uh, or just in the intro, from Joe Kennedy, Joe, Joe, Joe Kennedy from yesterday. And we had Rayla Campbell on last night, the Republican candidate against Ayanna Presley. And uh, she went to Joe's event where he was going to denounce Markey for racism and uh, or s- some 
what he said was racism. Ed Markey, Mr. Frosty, his opponent in the Senate primary. And so uh, Rayla was there, Rayla Campbell, and she was attacked by this crazy woman, Monica Cannon Grant, just just said these horrible, horrible things about her. I can't even go into it. We it's it's so so vile what she said. We can't even clean it up with uh, you know editing the tape. And so Rayla went there just to confront Kennedy because Kennedy has been endorsed by this this racist, this crazy racist from Roxbury. And uh, so then she saw that Monica Cannon Grant was actually there behind Joe Kennedy. So she started uh, she started yelling at uh, at Joe Joe Joe. And uh, we we had Rayla on last night, as I said, but we didn't have the uh, tape. We hadn't gotten it out. Uh, and uh, we had to edit that tape too, as well, because she was quoting what Monica Cannon Grant had said about her, what she'd called her, um, uh, some of the things she'd called her. So uh, we, we're going to play the cut from uh, this is Joe 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 Kennedy, uh, and he's and he he, uh, I mean she was she was really on fire, but he didn't handle it very well. He just kind of like uh, you know went crawled into the fetal position basically. Cut one. Hey, Joe, you going to denounce the bigot behind you? I'm melanin adjacent, apparently, according to her. You going to say something about that? Rayla Campbell for Congress. You going to say something about what she's been doing while you're standing up there giving hugs? Well, she went on a 40-minute racial tirade about my family, about me, about me being married to a white man. Talking about this how people should shoot me in the this head. Harriet Tubman would have shot me. Moment. She called me a n- a n- All right? And you're standing there celebrating her. I'm running for Congress against Ayanna Presley. Do I need this from someone who I don't even know? Well, that was good. She She really let her have it. But then, I mean, okay, so that's Joe taking it from Republicans and taking it from sort of the right, I would say, with Rayla, and from a black woman. So then this morning, he gets it from the left, from another white guy, Ed Markey, Mr. Frosty, and he gets it from a Democrat. And what they're saying is that he was at Stanford University, where he went to undergraduate uh, college, he was a member of K.A., Kappa Alpha Fraternity, which is like an old old line Southern fraternity. And I didn't know that they consider Robert E. Lee their founder, you know, or their spiritual founder. And all, all I know about K.A. is from Carolina, because I, I, I was telling the VIPs I'm not exactly a student of fraternity history. It was never, never really my thing in college. But K.A., they... They would all grow beards for homecoming in the fall, and they would dress up when for homecoming game in these con- gray Confederate uniforms. And back in the into the late 1960s, they would always uh, go to Carborough, which was next door, uh, and where there was a lot of black people. And they would get some little black kids and have the little black kids just running around the fraternity on uh, on homecoming. Just, it was weird, you know, weird stuff. Like they were, I hate to say it, like they were little slaves. And uh, so this went on and on into the 1960s. And then uh, Dean Smith, the coach of uh, Carolina basketball, he recruited a black player, uh, a a future All-American, Charlie Scott. He was a starter in 76 for the Celtics when they beat the Phoenix Suns and won the the NBA championship. So uh, Charlie Scott was there, first black player at Chapel Hill, and he's walking around campus on homecoming. And guess what he sees? He walks by the KA house, and there are all these guys with beards and Confederate un- looking like you know Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee and General Beauregard, and uh, and they got these little black kids running around. And he went to Dean Smith, and he said, "I can't take this, Coach. I, I this is." This is something I, w- I didn't buy into this. He's, I think he was from New York, Charlie Scott. And uh, they, that was the end of it. They, they, 
they had they still had the homecoming and i still think they had the confederate uniforms but they didn't have little black kids running around but this was the fraternity that uh joe 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 kennedy belonged to at uh, at stanford and i i guess when he announced he he said you know i made some mistakes in my life and you know, I shouldn't have been a member of KA. And I guess, I guess, you know, it wasn't as much of a Southern fraternity as it was at uh, Chapel Hill. Although there were, there were preppy type guys at uh, K who were KAs when I was there. But, uh, you know, so he's getting, he's getting pummeled from every side. It's, it's really something, you know, I mean, he's, he's, it's like the, uh, the sense of the, in his case, the great, great grandfather, Joe Kennedy, you know, hated, hated blacks, hated Jews, his grandfather, Bobby Kennedy, hated Jews, hated gays. And, uh, you know, and now it's, now it's all coming back on this kid, Joe, Joe, Joe Kennedy. And he, and he, and he, he looked, he, he looked like he was stunned by what happened. I don't know what it was like when he saw the KA story. He had to know that was, that was coming because he pr- apologized when he announced. But uh, he, when Rayla hit him so hard, I mean, he just, he, he looked like a ghost leaving uh leaving city hall plaza he was just uh in a, in a state of what looked like the shock that this was uh this was going on anyway that's it's uh it's a very interesting interesting race that's i mean race in the sense of political campaign not uh not a uh, race of people is what i you mean you better watch your microaggressions bro <laughs> 781 says, uh, Kappa Alpha, given his brave response yesterday, I'd say JoJo is more like Kappa Beta. <laughs> yeah, he came across more like a, like a beta male, that's for sure. 844-500-4242, uh, that's the uh, toll-free number of the How- Howie Car Show. When, uh, when we come back, we're going to have uh, Charlie Baker's press conference today. We've got a, maybe I'll bring Grace in because she cut it up. She, she paid the price of having to listen to it. And so she'll know the cuts that we should go with. But it was just another, uh, uh, another well, Charlie Parker-esque performance. Let's put it that way. Talking about erectile dysfunction isn't easy. Usually we just brush it off or blame ourselves saying things like, I lost my mojo, or we avoid it altogether with excuses like, I had a long day at work, or sorry, honey, I'm just not feeling it. But with Roman, it is easy to talk about it with a healthcare professional who can prescribe real medication. It's simple, safe, and totally discreet. Even now, it's still not that easy to get an appointment at a, uh, at, at a medical clinic or a doctor's office or even a hospital. And you don't want to have to bother with uh, going to the pharmacy to pick up a prescription and have to deal with the masks and all that nonsense. But with Roman, you don't need to put up with all that. No, none of these awkward visits. You can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. A healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Howie and complete an online visit. Erectile dysfunction used to be tough to tackle, but now there's Roman. Complete an online visit today to connect with a healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Howie today. If approved, you'll get a fifteen dollars you'll get fifteen dollars off your first order of erectile dysfunction treatment. That's getroman.com slash howie. Getroman.com slash howie. I'm Howie Carr. The paper boy with a big microphone. Howie Carr. Cory Booker said it best. There are definitely moments where you listen to Joe Biden and you just wonder. Here's stumbling and mumbling Bo Jiden, Joe Biden. David Duke. The former leader of the, K- the KKK. The Ku Klux Klan is the Ku Klux Klan. Eight more years of Donald Trump will change America in a fundamental way. If Donald, Hump, if Donald Trump is re-elected, Freudian slip, and the demagogues around, demagogues around the world. We also have a mechanism to control drug prices. Folks at HH, the, the, the folks at Health and uh, the, the Health Department in the United States, HHS. They would put 720 million back 
million women back in the workforce. I never ever thought that I'd see what I saw in Charlotte. Would you or would you not rejoin the TPP, yes or no? I would not rejoin the TTP. Well, they're going out and getting G5 and going to dominate. I mean, what are we doing? The bills that the president, that, excuse me, the future president here, that, that, that the senator is talking about. Here's how it works with my retirement accounts, and I'll bet yours too. If your 401k, your SEP, your IRA, whatever, is going up, you probably don't think very much about it, right? But if it's going down, well, there's nothing much else you can think of. So for the last couple of years, none of us have been worrying much about those quarterly statements. But lately, it's gotten a little worrisome. It's not that bad, not yet anyway, but what goes up must come down. Now is the time to start thinking about adjusting your investments. Gold and silver have always been a hedge against stock market volatility. Uncertainty about the future has traditionally met rising prices for precious metals. Orion Metal Exchange is the only precious metals company I trust. Give Orion a call to get a free, no-obligation investment guide about protecting your future with an enduring investment in gold and silver. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, including peace of mind, by calling Orion Metal Exchange now. Call them today at 800-912-2300. And with Orion, you'll get more metal for your money. Call 800-912-2300. That's 800-912-2300. President Trump is clearly, ethically unfit and intellectually unprepared to be the president of the United States. And I support uh, Chair, Chairman Woman. In the coming weeks, the bill, the House will hold hearings. Of, uh, Congresswoman Harris, Congressman, Senator, did I say Senator? Senator Harris. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So completely inappropriate in so many ways uh, that it's almost... A given. It's like a child who comes in with mud on their pants or something. That's the way it is. They're outside playing. That's what it is. He comes in with doggy do on his shoes, and everybody who works with him has that on their shoes, too. But I only will do that if you tell me that this legislation is worthy of George Kirby's name. This movement of that moment of national anguish. This is Karen from Dorica, Massachusetts. This is Adrian in Swanton, Vermont. This is Miss Susan up in Morner, New Hampshire. And this is the Howie Carr Show. 603 says UNH is now testing all incoming students for COVID. How about TB, AIDS, hepatitis B? Don't you want to know if your roomie has those? I I agree. I agree. When When I went to UNC... And also Deerfield, you had to know how to swim, you know, because there have been somebody whose kid had died, you know, because they didn't know how to swim. So they gave, they built a pool and both, both places, the same, same deal. But, uh, you have a better chance of dying of a drowning than you do of COVID-19 when you go to, when you're going to college. That's, I mean, that's a fact, isn't it? It's, it's just, it just is. And, and they don't want to talk about that. And, uh. I just saw this. Uh, this just happened today. Uh, it got a little play. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill will shift all undergraduate courses for the fall to remote instruction Wednesday. Fall. That means there won't be any problems with the KA homecoming uh, event at the, at the frat house. Uh, following a series of COVID-19 outbreaks on and around campus since starting classes last week. I mean, come on. This is ri- ridiculous. Did anyone die? Oh no, that's one of those stories. You read the whole story. No one died. Doesn't even say anybody got sick. They tested positive and that's it. Today's poll question is sponsored by our friends at massfiscal.org. Massfiscal has led the charge against tax increases, most recently opposing the horrible TCI transportation climate initiative gas tax proposed by Charlie Baker. And he got it through the legislature. And so it's, he's got it in his back pocket now for when the, uh, if the economy ever does a a slight upward uptick, as he likes to say, of COVID testing positive, if it ever has a slight upward uptick, he can knock it right back down with the doubling the gas tax. If you want to uh, know what's going on and how they're uh, trying to put their hands in your pocket, sign up for free at massfiscal.org, massfiscal.org. Do it now. Jared, what's the poll question? What are the results thus far? If you had to choose, 
Which one of these DNC speakers would you hang out with for the night? Senator Bernie Sanders, John Kasich, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, John Forbes Kerry, Senator Chuck Schumer, or Governor Gavin Newsom? I'm going to vote for Kerry just because they, it's the old saying, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Kerry is at 9%, tied with Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Oh, and who wins? Still Bernie? Bernie's still in the lead at 34%. People think steady. they're going to get some of that New York double fudge chunk. He's going to bring it into the bar. I don't think so. And if he does bring it into the he's going to charge us seven bucks for a pint of it. Eight four four five hundred four. It's funny these socialists. They, the socialists will give you the shirt off of off of somebody else's back, <laughs> but I, I I dare say Bernie will not give you the shirt off of his back. And the, bah, same, bah, 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 bah. the same thing applies to all those other worthies that are uh, there uh, in their uh, their basements. Eight four four five hundred forty two forty two. People want to know what uh, what the people at the KA homecoming were dressing up as. I didn't know many guys at KA. I, I knew some of the uh, Exeter guys who played on the lacrosse team, but that was about it for me. I uh, again, I had nothing against them. They just we just moved in different social circles. You know how it is. I, I never understood the the uh, the the lure of a fraternity house. You know, especially if you'd been in a dorm as a as in prep school. You know, I mean, I. I felt like I'd been in the barracks for a year, for a long enough. I, I I wanted to get out. Even a trailer was a was a step up from the barracks or the or the dorm, whatever you want to call it. Uh, eight four four five hundred forty two forty two. Okay, we got a bunch of Baker cuts here today, and uh, this is just just the same. Ah, okay, I we haven't played a lot of. Uh, we'll play some different ones here. He's got a new word today. He's got the, all the old words too, folks, people that he likes and people that work for him and have, haven't been laid off. Those are folks, you and me, people who have lost jobs or are worried about losing jobs or worried about our kids losing jobs or not going back to school. We don't rise to the level of folks. We're people. People have to conform unless they're in certain communities He's, he's very big on the word communities. He likes, he, and he, you know, if you're in, if you're in a community getting free testing, that means there are a lot of illegal aliens living in the community. So they have to give you free testing in addition to free everything else. So sometimes he calls people in communities folks, but those are the only people who aren't hacks, don't have public jobs that are folk that rise to the level of folks. But let's play the community mix first. Cut 30. This is all from this afternoon at his press conference. Cut 32. With the support of many folks in the public health community and the pediatric community, safe communities and communities at risk. On our community level data map, it's free testing in 17 communities across the Commonwealth to include three new communities, the total to 20 communities across Massachusetts that are part of this initiative. An enhanced community level data pack is spreading in their communities or not. And you can click on each community. This community level data with communities considered to be moderate or high risk. And if you live in a green or no color community on this map, communities then say to the folks to get the message out to your community that you are in fact a high risk community, a moderate risk community to where this thing sits from one community to another. The communities that are currently struggling, primary responsibility in their communities, local communities around mask ambassador programs. In many of these communities that we've been talking to who are in the red zone, um, who are high risk communities, we've been talking to many of the red communities about, I think that will be different in different communities for their community. If you're in a green or a white community, most communities in Massachusetts, and especially those communities that are green and white. Governor, I live in a municipality. What should I do? <sighs> Boy. Don't know. <laughs> we need the Charlie Parker intro. Do we have time for that Be on the way out? Then we'll, then we'll take some calls coming back. Sorry. You're enjoying your day. Everything's going your way. Then along comes Charlie Parker. Always there to tell you about a new disease. A car accident or killer bees. We beg her to spare you. Charlie, please. But you can't stop Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. 844-500-4242. Do you live in a community? 
Are you at risk? Do you have no water, poor water quality, or low pressure? This is Howie Carr. Call the local water service experts, Skillings and Sons. They're ready with 24-hour service with no extra charge for after-hours calls and a fleet of trucks stocked with parts to make sure you're not without water. With over 50 years of experience, they take pride in having a family of employees that are the best in the business. For all things water, Skillings and Sons is there for you. Skillingsandsons.com. I'm Kevin O'Connor, and I'm running for the United States Senate. Recently, I met with a group of cops, good people. They're upset, tired, and frustrated. Why? Our Washington politicians embrace the defund the police movement. How foolish. Let's honor our brave men and women in blue. I say defend the police. As a husband and as a dad, I know this. Our families want safe communities. On September 1st, vote for me for U.S. Senate. I'm Kevin O'Connor, and I approve this message. Paid for by Kevin O'Connor for U.S. Senate. Jim Acosta, without a doubt, wins the competition for Trump's least favorite journalist of all time. Let's listen to some of their feistier moments. I tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Should I let him have a little bit more? What do you think, Peter? Peter, should I let him have a little bit more? Sit down. uh, I'm changing it from fake news, though. Doesn't that undermine? Very fake news. I know, but aren't you? (laughs) When I raise money, money, excuse me, excuse me. I've watched you on television. You're a real beauty. Honestly, Uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. And if you did it well, your ratings would be much better. If I may ask one other question, Mr. President, if I may ask one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's enough. Mr. President, what do you say to your critics who say that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall because you couldn't get it through other ways? What do you think? Do you think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons because your question is a very political question because you have an agenda your cnn your fake news with all the uncertainty in the world feeling safe at home has never been more important it's why i want to talk to you about simply safe home security they're longtime friends of the howie car show and for good reason Simply Safe has made it easy to finally get comprehensive protection for your home. There's no technician or salesperson that needs to come and disrupt your house. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two year contract. You just order in under an hour, and your home is protected 24 7 with emergency dispatch for break ins, fire, and more. All for just 50 cents a day. And we're not the only fans of Simply Safe. U.S. News and World Report named Simply Safe best overall home security of 2020. Go to simplysafehowie.com to try it out for yourself. That's sim- They know that our show sent you. That's simplysafehowie.com. Jim Acosta, without a doubt, wins the competition for Trump's least favorite journalist of all time. Let's listen to some of their feistier moments. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Should I let him have a little bit more? What do you think, Peter? Peter, should I let him have a little bit more? Sit down. uh, I'm changing it from fake uh, news, though. Doesn't that undermine? Very fake news. I know, but aren't you? (laughs) When I raise raise money, money, excuse me, excuse me. I've watched you on television. You're a real beauty. Honestly, Uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. And if you did it well, your ratings would be much better. If I may ask one other question, Mr. President, if I may ask one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's enough. Mr. President, what do you say to your critics who say that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall because you couldn't get it through other ways? What do you think? Do you think I'm creating something? Ask these Incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons because your question is a very political question because you have an agenda. You're CNN. You're fake news. They're outlandish, they're outrageous, and they're hypocrites. They're the women of The View. Bernie was so menschy in that moment, like a real guy. I actually am aroused by him. Timothy McVeigh was a Christian. Just saying. Hitler was a Christian. Well, he didn't like the Catholics. Trump needs to be medicated and hospitalized (laughs) at this point, or he is going to just kill all of us. I mean, do we have to wait till the hammer and sickle is on the American flag before we stand up to this guy? Joy, you've worn blackface. I did not go in blackface, please. No, she was not in blackface. Thank you. It was a Halloween party. I went as a beautiful African woman. Did you have tanning lotion on? A little, I had makeup that was a little bit darker Uh, than my skin. I'm hoping Dr. Jill becomes a surgeon general. She's a hell of a doctor. Whoopi, you you said that Roman Polanski, it wasn't rape rape. I know it wasn't 
rape, rape. I, child molest, maybe? I'm I not think sure. It was, child something, it was something else, but I don't believe it was rape, rape. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Live from the Matthews Brothers Studios. 844-500-4242. We'll take some calls in this segment. You can open it up and uh, we'll see. I, I brought uh, Grace in here because uh, I, I inflicted this upon her. Don't you like getting that uh, when I forward you the, uh, the, the email in the morning, Grace, and it says, Governor Charlie Parker's coronavirus update at noon, Gardner Auditorium. I don't mind it because it comes around lunchtime, so I can just put my headphones in, eat my lunch, and watch him talk. All It's a little bit of multitasking, but depending on, you know, how obnoxious he is that day, it does get kind of old. So I wanted to go over some of my favorite cuts from today, Howie. Let's start with the word of the day. Charlie Baker seems to find a word, and he likes it, and he rolls with it. This is um, a word that's not communities or this, folks or people? No, those this is are, a new word? Those are standbys. This is okay. a word that I'm hoping someday will be used as much as communities, but it'd be hard to work this in as often. This is cut 12. What we try to do is provide them with guidance in the first place and then to buttress either with money or personnel, whatever it is they're trying to do. That's... That's like on your calendar word. Try buttress. to use this word in a sentence. You know, I would recommend Bill Clinton tonight not use the word buttress <laughs> during his uh, speech, especially since these new revelations today and the photographs <laughs> that have shown up on the internet. But you know what the thing is? Sometimes it's, when you try to use a word and you have it set in your mind, like, oh, I'm going to use the word buttress, then it never, the first time never feels natural. So you try to use it again, which brings us to cut 13. Most of our conversations with local police has been, what can the state police do to but- buttress what you're already up to? And he struggled with to, the second to one. To but- buttress. <laughs> That's like sometimes he confuses continue and contribute. Yeah. He has a problem with that first syllable. It's, it's uh, early Biden syndrome, I think. So then he went on to um, go to a classic, which is... Now, VIPs, I know that you guys don't listen to Charlie Parker as much as I do. So you're probably under the impression that the coronavirus is taking the summer off. I know Like everybody, right? That's what you guys think. But Charlie Parker and myself, we're here to tell you that is not the case. You're wrong. This is cut 14. We urge people to continue to use common sense and keep doing those things that we know work. Wear face coverings, maintain social distance, and practice appropriate hygiene. As people enjoy the final few weeks of summer and head out for vacations, we should all remember that COVID-19, to say it again, does not take the summer off, and neither can we. You know, it may not take the summer off, but, I mean, four people dead yesterday, six people dead today. I mean, again, that's too many, but it seems like it's taken a bit of a slide. No, Howie. No, it's not. How many times do I have to tell you? Over and over he again. Did leave early to like try to get in eighteen holes of golf. No, he he used a different expression today too. Um, oh, this is cut thirty. The virus, as we've said before, does not stop at any one town line. And if you live really? in a green or no color community on this map, you must keep doing all the things you've been doing to stop the spread. It's- wait. So th- wait a second. So if. The the virus does not stop at the boundaries. No. But so then what does it matter to the to the virus if it if it's in a no color, which by the way, I'm I'm worried about that phrase, no color. You better I, watch your micro uh, I, I sense a dog whistle with the no color uh community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but how does the virus know with whether it's in a no color or a red or a green community, Grace? Well, here's the thing. The virus does not stop at any town line. However, It will stop at a restaurant threshold if it sees that everyone's sitting down and eating food. If there's food on the plates, the virus will stop. No, no, it moves on. It moves on. No, that's what you said. You're you're confusing me, Grace. No, it will not cross the threshold. If if, if the virus sees people sitting around with mixed drinks and beers and an occasional uh, some wine, then it will will come in. Then it will come in and attack. That's what I just said. 
No, you said food makes it attack. I said it will not cross the threshold if it sees people sitting down with food, Howard. Okay, wh- what about... Now, I, I go to some restaurants occasionally that have homemade potato chips. Now, I know, the, I know the virus lurks in bags of potato chips and comes rushing out once you open the bag of a potato chip, at least in New York and Massachusetts. But what if you have homemade potato chips? That, are, that were fried up in the kitchen. That is so, I believe I'm quoting Charlie when I say that is very clear, no. No. No no virus with homemade potato no, chips. No, no pretzels and potato chips do not count. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, he said that they if, if pretzels and potato chips don't count if they come out of a bag. Did he specify the bag? I just don't think he wants any sort of potato chips. Did this just happen? <laughs> I think the key now are they is, more likely to come in in a like a barbecue chip, here's, or a, or or a uh, a ruffles type chip, or are they just come in standard chips. I'm going to give everybody a piece of advice. If you find yourself at an establishment and you don't want to eat a meal but you want to drink and you have to order something, take a cue from my late Nana, who was not a big eater but she liked to go out. You get the shrimp cocktail. You pass one around to everybody. Bam. One trim cocktail is not going to fill you up. Kind of pricey, though, if you just want a beer. <laughs> All right, John Kerry. Some of us <laughs> like to spend it when we're out. Okay, but guys, we have more to get to. The next one I want to get to, which cracked me up, is, so remember how this all started and everyone said, we just have to flatten the curve. We have to flatten the curve so the hospitals don't get overwhelmed. Once we flatten the curve, we can get back to normal. It was supposed to be like a two-week thing. Right, to two weeks, right. I remember. Charlie Baker does not only not remember, he doesn't even remember the curve. So this is, and you have to listen really carefully, this is cut 27. Questions on this stuff? Yeah, well, we've talked a lot about the curve over the last six months. I haven't heard a lot about it recently. Which curve? The curve. Of okay. I mean, Which the reporter, curve? The Are reporter was annoyed. Me? The reporter was like, the curve. <laughs> but, well, it was everywhere. The curve was all we were talking about Flat, for, forever. And he goes, which curve? And then he goes, okay. Oh, boy. Something we were supposed to be obsessed with, now nobody cares about. Um, okay, we have more. So I think we played this earlier, but it's worth playing again. Charlie Parker wants you to know how proud he is that they are shutting down pools. Um, they are ruining, They are getting rid of um, lifeguards who might be carrying coronavirus. This is cut 20. We closed a couple of DCR pools in Lawrence over the weekend because of some concerns about uh, possible spread associated with some lifeguards who tested positive for COVID. Um, Any deaths? We've done a bunch of things with Any uh, local communities around mask ambassador programs, mask around ambassador. Um, sort of enhanced presence on local beaches. Um, he reminds enhanced me. Enhanced presence of on the local ho- beaches. What do they, I mean, what do they have people walking up and down? Hey, COVID virus, out, <laughs> screw. What, I mean, what do they do? What does these people do on the beach? It's like we're a nation of hall monitors. Everyone's like, and you know what I did? You know what I did? I went down to the pool and I shut it down. Mm-hmm. It's like, good for you? Who? Why, why should we be proud of that? And then, Howie, there was another thing I wanted to talk about, which was he thinks, oh, so someone had the audacity to ask Charlie Baker about the false positives that are coming out of these coronavirus tests. Mm-hmm. And he does not like those kind of Yeah, this is, this is happening a lot. I just got a, a message from a guy in Kentucky uh, who I know, and they're, they're, not even reporting the, uh, they're not even reporting the negative tests. By law, the labs only have to report positive tests. So guess what? A higher percentage of people are testing positive since they don't have to report it. Well, Charlie Baker doesn't even... He considers this question hate speech. He's not used to them asking him any sort of difficult questions. So this is cut. And see if you can hear the anger in his voice. This is cut 18. Governor, do you have more information on those false positives at one testing facility last week that sort of threw the numbers off? Um, I don't have more. Do you have more? It wasn't. I mean, we've done two million tests. I think it was 900 tests that we're talking about. But do you have data on this? It's. Governor, we're just looking for some metrics, okay? Can you give us some protocols here for the sector? Just we want some metric sector protocols. That's all. 
You can't you give us this? Is he saying there's only 900 tests that were false positives? That was the last week, though. I mean, who knows how many there were? I and mean, still, it, is it 900? I don't care how many tests you've taken. 900. Yeah, that's I mean, worth asking about, I mean, right? That's enough to that's enough to twist the nut. I mean, he goes berserk when the uh, no, except when there's a riot. If it's if there's been a riot going on, and you know people have been shooting at cops in downtown Boston, then if it goes over two percent, that's a successful ratio because it's just a a largely peaceful demonstration of the folks. So now what you is- could riot and you're the folks. If you want to go to to the beach, you're people. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I listen to this stuff as much as you do. I know. You know what the thing is, too, though, Howie, what I'm I, noticing with this map is that it used to be that you go into Trader Joe's or something and you were masks versus no masks. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're making it so political. You can see how someone feels based off if they take their masks seriously. Now what he's trying to do is he's trying to pit these communities against each other so he's like oh we're talking to the red communities about everything they're doing wrong and if you're in a if you're in a white community which i agree with you that seems like a not okay thing to say <laughs> Watch your microaggressions, or if you're in a green community or whatever yeah you're doing things right but it doesn't mean that you couldn't do things wrong too but don't worry we're really mad at the red communities so listen to him talk about the red communities this is cut 23 I think you're going to see um, a lot more activity. One of the things that um, we've been talking to many of the red communities about is roles and responsibilities with respect to face coverings and large sort of unregulated gatherings. And I think that will be different in different communities depending upon what they think the right way to go about it is. The red communities like to have fun unregulated gatherings so do you need to go down to town hall now to get a permit to have a barbecue in your backyard your papers please oh that's right oh that's right town hall has shut down for the last five months where do you get your permit to have a barbecue well the other thing is is that he thinks that the problem is that people loosened up too fast you know, with the weather got nice and you wanted to go out and maybe have a barbecue and look what it did. Does somebody ever ask him how many times, how, Governor, I mean, every death is a, is unfortunate, but there's nobody dying anymore, okay? Can you take your boot off my neck? Well, I, I keep saying this, but I find it interesting that there's there's such little sympathy in his voice for the people who this has really devastated and obviously you can got you you can hide everything under i'm trying to keep people safe that's a way of guilting all of us into feeling selfish for wanting to you know do things we want to do jared and i talk about this all the time they're trying to train you into feeling bad for your rights but there's not even a little hint in his voice of the wedding venues i understand why they're struggling right. or the restaurants i get it like even just once or, or to say i, or, I get or, it or i'd like to even though the red sox suck i'd like to go to fenway park or to, or to gillette stadium for a for a patriots game right he has no sympathy for people like that no but except he does want to play basketball he does so he 603 does. says can you build a casino in a red community well that's a that's an interesting point too because everett is a red community i believe i they, there was a guy shot coming out of the casino on uh on on or early Sunday morning around 3 a.m. And I tweeted it out the story and I said, another COVID casualty. <laughs> people people said I, that was very, uh, very terrible, selfish, terrible, rude thing for me to say. And you just probably sat there on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> I said, they just wish they'd thought of it first. <laughs> um, let's play Charlie Baker explaining why he thinks it's more important to have communities and stats for all these communities as opposed to statewide stats, which make people too relaxed. This is cut 26. You know, we want to work with you to get the message out to your community that you are, in fact, um, a high risk community, a moderate risk community, and work with you to do things to actually bring your numbers down and to be able to say to those folks that are in the green or the white, you know, you're doing a lot of the right things, keep doing it, don't stop. And that that whole issue of just having one statewide number may have actually made people a little um, a little more relaxed than maybe they should be with respect to where this thing sits from that's, one community. That's to why another. they got rid of my favorite chart. 
because it, it because just when you just when you look at that number and you see oh I'm under the age of 20 I have a 0% chance of dying I'm under the age of 30 I have a one in a million chance of dying that leads to perhaps a thought that you're not in danger but also how and this is the last thing I'll say before we break but this idea that people are too relaxed or loosening up if we're at this point in this coronavirus, we're this many months in and people don't start loosening up and people don't start relaxing. We're going to see mental health decline like you've never seen. People are going to start killing themselves because this is how we're supposed to live in bunkers with no jobs and no businesses and nothing to do. I'm glad people go outside with their no relatives schools. and have a drink. No schools. No you, schools. You can't, you can't send your kids to school. Okay, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back and we'll take a few more calls on the way out. I'm Howie Carr. A nightmare to liberals everywhere. He's Howie Carr. Alexander Hamilton said, those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. This is Toby from Cape Gunworks. When our founding fathers drafted the Second Amendment, there was no question of its meaning. Today, if you have questions, come to Cape Gunworks for some advice, training, or to send a few rounds downrange. We have a fully stocked pro shop with a huge selection of guns, crossbows, archery, classes, rentals, a 15-lane range, and a friendly staff. Come on down to Cape Gunworks Airport Road Hyannis or capegunworks.com. Recently, I had Global Marble and Granite install new gorgeous marble countertops in my home. Global Marble and Granite has the largest selection of marble, granite, and quartz on Cape Cod. They also serve Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and all of New England. People are spending more time in their homes, so now is the best time to upgrade your kitchen or baths. Your home is your biggest investment, and Global Marble and Granite is ready to increase the value. Visit their site and see my kitchens before and after shots. Go to GlobalCapeCod.com or call 508-771-1001. He is the youngest senator that is going to be running. In his video, he also mentioned he's the only senator that lives in the inner city, and he's an unmarried vegan. So a lot of very (laughs) unique qualities Cory Booker brings to the table, Kate. Now, I appreciate the comments of my colleagues. This is about the closest I'll probably ever have in my life to an I am Spartacus moment. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Joey, you like movies about gladiators? Have you ever had uh, an LGBTQ uh, law clerk? Um, I've not been a judge, so I don't have any law clerks. I'm uh, sorry, working someone working for you. Um, I, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I don't know the sexual orientation of my, my staff. When Dick Durbin called me, I had tears of rage when I heard about this experience in that meeting. And for you not to feel that hate, hurt, tears of rage, tears of rage. W- would you just stop being so dramatic? I'm a big believer that if America... If this country hasn't broken your heart, then you don't love her enough. You've been hearing me talk about Super Beats for a while now, and I'm sure some of you are still thinking, why Super Beats? You could take it from me. The benefits of Super Beats are incredible. I take them twice a day, once in the morning when I get up, even before I have my first cup of coffee, and the other time in the afternoon, right before the show. It gives me a burst of energy. It's great for my blood pressure. It's good for circulation. It just makes you feel better. If that doesn't convince you, we can talk about the science behind Super Beats. Beats have nitrates. Nitrates support better blood flow, and better blood flow equals better energy and efficiency throughout the body and even supports healthy blood pressure. But Super Beets does so much more than eating regular beets and is unparalleled compared to other beet powders. Just one scoop of Super Beets has the nitric oxide equivalent of three whole beets. Go to superbeetsradio.com slash Howie and try out Super Beets yourself. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. www.superbeetsradio.com slash Howie. He is the youngest senator that is going to be running. In his video, he also mentioned he's the only senator that lives in the inner city and he's an unmarried vegan. So a lot of very (laughs) unique qualities Cory Booker brings to the table, Kate. Now, I appreciate the comments of my colleagues. This is about the closest I'll probably ever have in my life to an I am Spartacus moment. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Joey, you like movies about gladiators? Have you ever had uh, an LGBTQ uh, law clerk? Um, I've not been a judge, so I don't have any law clerks. I'm uh, sorry, working someone working for you. Um, 
I'm, I'm, to be honest, I don't know the sexual orientation of my, my staff. When Dick Durbin called me, I had tears of rage when I heard about this experience in that meeting. And for you not to feel that hate, hurt, tears of rage, tears of rage. W- would you just stop being so dramatic? I'm a, I'm a big believer that if America, if this country hasn't broken your heart, then you don't love her enough. Hi, this is John in the People's Republic of Amherst, Massachusetts. This is Heather from Litchfield, Maine. This is Kent, Wichita, Kansas, and this is the Howie Car Show. 844-500-4242. Mark, you're next with Howie Car. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Howie. Hi. Hey, did you also see uh, Charlie Parker's ridiculous youth sports mandate that came out today? No, what is that? Oh. Let's see. Face coverings on all baseball players, youth. Face coverings on all spectators, even though you're separated around an entire baseball field. You're kidding. No. Face coverings on spectators. Spectators. Yep. And uh, there's all kinds of rules about non-family members aren't allowed to attend. It's He's out of control. He is. I, I can't believe his, his ratings are this. He, he has high favorability numbers. I don't know anybody who's not PO'd about this. Do you? How, how, no. How, how much of his, your life can you let him micromanage? There's, there's a clause in there about hockey players in a face-off must have face coverings. Soccer players may remove their face covering when running downfield a long distance. But how about if you decide to head the ball in soccer? Do you have to put the mask up over your forehead? I mean, just think about putting a mask on your face and you, you put yourself in danger with someone throwing 90 miles an hour at you. You could make an athletic move and move it over your eyes. Oh, God. You read about it. It's like, it's like 15 pages. It goes into effect tonight. Oh, we my had a God. Youth baseball game in, we had a youth ba- baseball game in Bolton the other day. There was a guy from the DPW wearing an orange vest running around telling everybody to put their masks on. The DPW now? It's bad enough yeah. the, the health inspectors. Now they got the DPW, the guys yeah, usually... He, he, he uh. didn't really want to be there, but I think he had to be there. God. This like is just... Youth sports. Youth this... sports. We've been playing baseball all summer. Both my kids. I, I know. And there's fewer people he... dying now than there have been in ever, it, you know, since this whole nonsense started. And, and he's just... He cracks down. He just keeps tightening the screws. You know, this is like, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, they say, uh, you know, one drink is too many and a thousand are not enough. Same with these rules. One is too many and a thousand are not enough. They just keep reaching for more. Ah, back tomorrow. I'm Howie Carr. The last few months have been stressful for many, and it's time to do something for yourself. Recently, Grace reminded me of when I had that bad haircut four years ago. It was actually more like a buzz cut. Although it wasn't planned, I'm incredibly grateful to DiStefano Hair Restoration. Everyone was able to see that my hair could really grow back. I was annoyed when I couldn't get a haircut because of the shutdown, but I am happy that I at least have hair to cut once more. You can have the hair you've been thinking about for all these years. Dr. Hines did a great job for me, and he will for you, too. To learn more, go to hairman.com. You may have more time on your hands now, so take advantage of it and get the hair you've been wanting for years. People always stop me and say, it looks so natural. DiStefano Hair Restoration has five locations in New England and is open for business. For more information on location openings, go to hairman.com. Get the hair you've always wanted. And now, another minute of Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi. But, uh, uh, again, don't... Uh, you have these wings, AOC and her group on one side. That's like five people. They 